Hello, little ones. Would you like to hear a story? I've got one for you. Of dungeons and douchebags. Long ago, the land of Irion was governed by many majestic empires. The humans of the plains, the elves of the forest, the oreads of the mountains, the marrow of the oceans, and the kobolds and Okiti taking what was left. But, as is so common amongst all with darkness in their hearts, those who had power would not be satisfied until they had more. War broke out, alliances being made and broken in a second, as the once civilized races slew each other in droves in vain attempts to get one more seat of power. The kobolds, on the brink of annihilation, sought out a new draconic god who would protect them. Instead, they found Dragotha. A powerful and terrible dragon, Dragotha cared not for the suffering of those around him. Taking advantage of the warring continent, Dragotha raised Irion to the ground, seeking to carve a mighty empire in his name. A last desperate alliance stood firm against Dragotha, and after a terrible battle, the dragon was finally slain. With Irion torn apart, and no one in any shape to continue the war, an armistice was reached, and the Great War ended. Now, many years later, Irion has started to rebuild, and the Age of Clockwork has begun. And our unlikely heroes, gathered first to celebrate a harvest festival, may soon find themselves at the center of another war. Trevlon, the halfling bard. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this mystery, right after I've had this little nap. Corellian, the kobold paladin. You must understand, I will do whatever it takes. Malifane, the half-elf rogue. You have me rather curious. Tell me something about you. Thavagath, the Goliath Barbarian. With victory comes honor. <laughs> and goes. And Momo, the Arakakra cleric. You seem tense. Let me help you. From humble beginnings, these brave adventurers may soon find themselves the key to saving the fallen empires. Last time on Dungeons and Douchebags, Fallen Empires. Our heroes were being assaulted by a dread disease known as Mindfire that had surrounded a catalyst for the corruption in the Sacred Grove. Quickly defeating the strangely garbed man guarding the catalyst, they interrogated him, finding his name was Ashton, son of the Gorewalker of the Plague Lords. He claimed to be doing some dark experiments in affiliation with the Oread of the Northern Mountains, but the interrogation was cut short as the heroes tended to Momo, who was still suffering under the effects of Mindfire, and Ashton used some kind of chemical to end his life and melt his body away. Solana opted to stay and recover, explaining that there were two sources of corruption, and if our heroes could deal with the first, she could use the Cascade to deal with the second, and hopefully get rid of the corruption around the Sacred Grove. It was not an easy task, however, as even with the glow light protecting their way, a hero still dealt with a monstrous, mutated moth that was attracted to the massive vortex of necrotic energy below the Sacred Grove. After a long and difficult battle, our heroes finally slew the fiendish moth, and purified the energy that was making the animals and plant life around the grove go wild. It was then that they reunited with Solana, who was as good as her word and purified her end as well, and teleported them back to Ash and Allura. What's happened in town while our heroes were away? What adventures await them on the road back home? And will that plot device of Thavagath having Storm's Herald ever come up again? <laughs> I think you already know that last one. But let's find out on tonight's episode of Dungeons and Douchebags, Fallen Empires. Hello and welcome to Dungeons and Douchebags, Fallen Empires. I'm here with these chuckle fucks. Uh, we've, got, <laughs> we've got Jojo. We've got Scott. You know, it's like my friends on the Fire Emblem Hero forums once said, Fury pairs well with depression. We've got Phil. I'm the only one here qualified to be a clown. Doubt. Press X to doubt. Uh, 
We've got Atlas. I have many questions, and frankly, none of them have answers that I'm willing to confront at this time. Okay, and we've got Walrus. One moment. I need to get something out. Just need to get something out. There we go. <laughs> there we Thank you. Okay, excellent. We're good I'm, to go. I'm, uh, I'm glad you got that out of your system. Thank you. All right. So, last time we left off, our heroes had defeated the giant moth that was uh, guarding the corruption of the Sacred Grove, got rid of the corruption, and have teleported back to Ashenalora, City of the Elves, alongside their companion, Solana. Uh, it is currently midday, uh, and you guys look like shit and probably need a rest as I pull up the music. Did we did we know what actually happened to our escort party? Do we know where they went? No. Oh shit. Uh, should, Is that something hmm. we should be worried about? I mean, I'm worried about it. I'm a little bit concerned. We should be worried about it, recuperating, so we can help if they need us. Uh, I mean, I get that, but what if they're like, you know, needing help now? <laughs> that would be bad, wouldn't it? And what help could we provide? in this state. Looking for them would be a good start? Uh, I mean, yes, but on, on the other hand, looking for them may entail getting, finding, the, okay, how, how, hmm, how would you, how much would you say are we, we injured? Uh, on, on a scale of one to ten. Well, you specifically, Trevlon, if, uh, Actually, yeah, I remember I healed you guys because you leveled up. Uh, it's just like mm -hmm. you're covered in like pollen, dust, probably a bunch of poisonous substances. Uh, mostly you need to clean the hell up and get some uh, blood off you. On a scale of 1 to 10, mm -hmm. I would say you look like 7 shit. Nice. Oh, okay. Wait, 10 being the worst or 10 being the best? 10 being the worst shit. Nah. Oh. We're, we're pretty shit. I mean, granted, we do look like death, but on the other hand, we are not death, so we should probably we should probably like use this state of non-death to find the people who might be death. If that makes any sense. Yeah, very yeah, eloquent. Yeah, I think so. Your way um, with words anybody never else call objections? Uh, Solana looks over and is like, "Your way with words never fails to astound me." I am. The perfect wordsmith. That's a fact. Um, right. Should we check around the entrance to this to the place, or should we should we spread out? Where exactly are we in this? That's city? a very good question. Uh, that is a very good question. Uh, you used a teleportation circle to get here, and the teleportation circle in Ashenalora is, as I pull up that town document, that would be in a library. And how long were we currently. in game? How long were we in the um, the area since we since we were separated from uh, our entourage? Uh, let's see. You went in to the sacred grove like middle of the night. Uh, you you peek through a window. It looks to be about midday. Hmm. I so think it's, it's, let's say it's been at least. Half a day, maybe a little bit more. Hmm. We should check around the city before we go back. Yeah, I think that's good. Agreed. Uh, anybody got any specific places they're thinking of checking out? Um, I could check the last place we met, like where we. <clears throat> do you, oh um, yeah. Alex, um, do you remember the? Well, obviously, you probably do. Well, I remember. Place that was. <laughs> Then I'm very <laughs> the the building that was locked up, and I was left there to make sure that they came back. Obviously, I remember that. Yes. Uh, What's the name of that building? As I lean back and wait to see if you took notes. <laughs> we didn't necessarily take notes. We do. The cheap dwarf. Yeah, that's the one. This is why you oh, take no. notes, fuckers. <laughs> oh, such disappointment in that voice. <laughs> we tried very hard. 
<laughs> we got it's so El, it's, El, it's, El, it's Elmar and Sharp. Oh yeah. I think honestly, I think that might be a good place to start for all of us. I'm expecting, like, in terms of a headquarters, they'd probably go back there, mm. or at least That's something that they didn't get caught in the uh, in the battle. I mean, shit! Did you see that guy who was climbing that one with a flamethrower and just sort of making that was him drink it? That did, was Omarin. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What, what I mean to say is, they are all pretty badass, and I don't think they're going to be. You know, I don't think they're going to be not good. Is what I'm saying. I'm sure they're all fine, and I'm sure Omarin will be able to tell us that. I can only hope you're right. Half a day is a long time. It's worth are the chance to look. Are we going to keep talking, or are we going to start walking? Let's go. Let's do the walking. I think. Mm. All right. You uh, you head out of the library and towards the cheap dwarf. Uh, you get a couple of stares and uh, like overdone pinched noses from elves as they pass you by, but like nothing, <laughs> nothing really ruder than that. You get to the cheap mm. dwarf. Just as uh, you see Omarin at the door, uh, unlocking it and preparing to uh, start up shop. Omarin! Hey. Yeah, boss, you're alive. Uh, he turns to you, smirks a bit as you call him boss, and is like, Oh, yeah, you fuckers, you're alive, nice. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know how we did it, but we did it. There was a giant moth, <laughs> mm. we, slap, we slapped the thing, and then the portal decided to be good. There's also so, a big stone lady that nearly killed us. Yeah, she crushed she crushed Thav and not in a good way. It was it was oof, it was gross. In any case, yeah, we took care of it. We're yeah, alive, we, aren't we? Yeah, we're we are alive. That is that is true. Speaking uh, of being alive, um y- you go on, Carlin. Are all of you alive? Uh, yes, yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. Uh and even though that does sound like uh weird internet slang, there are nine hells, so that would be the correct way to say it in D D world. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bunch of fucking plants never stood a chance. Apparently not with fire. I mean shit. I I anticipated that when it came to you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as he says this, there are a couple passing by elves who give him a stink eye. He either doesn't really notice or doesn't care. Well, Uh, I would invite you in, but you all fucking stink, so... You know what? We'll we'll just pass with a a knowing nod, and that'll be fine. Great. Awesome. Um... Does does Solana need to do anything? Has she has she paid these people for for doing their thing? Uh, Solana, uh, Solana steps forward and asks, uh, "Your your leader, Ravanala. Where can I find her?" And uh, Omarin gives her some directions. She nods, turns to you, and is like, "Well, on that note, I believe our particular business is concluded." <laughs> It right. was a pleasure doing business with you. Mm. Yeah, likewise. Are are you all right after the uh, mine fire? So I I believe a few days rest and I can manage just fine. I'd hope so. That's good. Glad that you're okay. Thank you for helping in there. She nods. Please take take care of yourself. Mm. Don't I always? <laughs> And she heads off. Now, I guess this speaking means of it's... recovering. Hmm? Now, speaking of recovering, he looks down at Momo, picks him up immediately. Let's go fucking rest. I, I'm fine, really. Rest. <laughs> it has been a long I have, day. I have legs, so I can walk. At which point he immediately stuffs him into the the comfiest and fluffiest part of his dr- uh, not me. Throne <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay, you I'm not gonna lie. lie. That looks really wrong from my perspective. That's so hard. I mean, from... <laughs> We've learned what? not to question it. I mean, would you question him? Fav does a big shrug. Yeah, Omar I mean, looks at him and is like, kidnap- "Yeah." Mm. Haven't we all kidnapped birds in our time? In- <laughs> Don't answer that question. We don't uh, know. Uh, <laughs> that would be like uh, basically impossible. Uh, all the birds except that one are dead. So that's 
Uh, <laughs> Fair let's, enough. Let, okay, let's let's change the subject. Um, uh, Momo oh, like rustles here. in the in the in the comfy spot and like waves his hand out and like pushes himself out and gasps for. <gasps> Wait, I I have a question about that. <clears throat> I never really understood why everyone said that. De- Are they all actually dead? Yeah. What what happened? As I roll history for Omar and to see if he knows, uh, couple different reasons, mostly uh, just haunted to extinction. Couple different people like barbarians, minotaurs, orcs when they got really bored. Orcs usually keep themselves these days though, but yeah, over hunting, raiding, no more birdmen. I mean, that's all well and good to say that, but it's a bit. <sighs> Other races have been smacked around, they've been raided, they've been attacked, but I don't know of any other peoples in this island that have gone completely extinct. Well, <coughs> if there are any out there, they sure as hell haven't shown up for a couple hundred years. You know, being extinct and all. Hmm. I mean... Hard to prove and all. I mean, in fairness, if you're being hunted, would you really want to? That too. That's also, wrong. That's also true. Anyway, suppose there could be birds from like across the sea or something. Across the seas, not usually a journey a lot of people make. So hell, if I could prove it. <laughs> um, Thank you, Alex. I know that I, I know that you, you, you chastise us for not taking rules. Um, the cultist mentions um, a group of folks. Um, that Oriad, yeah. I want to ask about mm-hmm. that. Okay. Chevron uh, sort of coughs and sort of goes, <clears throat> um, before we part ways and we take a well-deserved nap and shower, um, I was wondering if I could talk to you about something. Do you know much about the Oriad? Another great role for intelligence from the, the big <laughs> guy. As I actually pull up his picture because it's a good picture and everyone needs to there see more is. uprising art. There it is. There yeah. it is. <laughs> All right. He's like, Orion, yeah, I, I know about those guys. They uh, they keep claiming to be the most ancient and sacred of races in Erion, but <laughs> you ask me, if they were, they wouldn't keep getting sold into slavery by fucking dwarves, am I right? Though, uh, and then he looks up thinking for a while. Oh, wait, now that I think about it, I think they're out and they kicked out the dwarves while they were at it. Yeah, and it seems that they also have a bone to pick with you guys, because... Uh, really? <laughs> I'd like to see them try. They did try. That whole... <laughs> that, uh, and, uh, well, and the smirk crosses Omar in space like, oh, hell yeah. They... Mm, okay, long story I don't story know if short, that's true, Tri. We don't know uh, if that's true. That's true. The guy might have been lying, but... You know what? Before we do pursue this matter, we need to figure out, you know, the real reason. So, hopefully at some point we'll be able to get a little bit more evidence on this fact. Um, but yeah. Cult is plugged I'd be willing to say every, take everything he says with a grain of salt. Yeah. No one like him is willing to be trusted. Mm. Yeah. In any case, that's, that's what we heard. It might not be true. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about it. All right. Um, quick, quick, quick question before we leave, Omar and oh, Omar, and sorry, before because I may want to ask him something. Did the Misty Lavender have bathing facilities? Um, yeah, you, there's like some buckets of water you could use to wash up. You don't have to bring your own soap, though. They uh, they don't like lending it out to people who aren't part of the enclave. I mean, we did just save that whole forest, but... Hmm. Not that Get they know. rules, man! It's the fucking yeah. Union! What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose buckets it will have to be. Unless anybody wants to just sort of randomly jump in a river. Um, yeah. Let's go get cleaned up. Woo! Anything is better than nothing. Maybe I'll buy some soap in the market if I find a stall. All right. You, uh, you head back to the Misty Lavender, again, with a couple of stairs and, uh, trying to get away from <coughs> upwind of you. Downwind of you, rather. Uh, and as you enter the Misty Lavender, 
uh, the first barmaid that you met was, uh, when you came here, is back, twirling her hair, staring off into space. And sitting in the misty lavender, standing out from the rest of uh, the patrons here, is an elf in white robes. Not not silver, it's not your mentor, Momo. It is, in fact, the same high, high elf that uh, ran past you on a big old white horse a couple days before, mentioning that his horse ate better than you people. And as you enter, he turns, looks, and stares directly at you, Corellian. Do I recognize this this fella? Roll other a than from, from anything other than you know what we saw of him previously. Roll a history Sp- check. Um, you have a feeling you really should know who this is, but it's just not coming to you. <laughs> Does he look like he recognizes me? Because if I recall correctly, I was about Thab's height when we last met. Or when I uh, remember last seeing him, that is. Roll an insight check. He definitely looks like he recognizes you, which is strange because, as you said, the last time he saw you, you were seven feet tall. <laughs> and using that, you can reroll history to th- try and put some pieces together. <coughs> oh boy, zero modifier. Oh. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna PM you the answer. Thanks. Um, Out of there. Um. Da, 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 da. And yeah, he's just sitting there staring. Can, excuse me, sir. Can we um? Can we help you? No. Oh. Oh. Um. Okay. Then. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. That's um. That's a nice. Does Does he still have his horse? Nah, the horse. He does inside not have a horse tavern. inside. He doesn't have I a horse. I thought we were inside. outside the tavern. I'm so The horse has his own stool. Uh, you check outside <laughs> the tavern. You don't see his horse there. Okay. Well then. Um. Yeah. I guess. Um, we're going. I think I, there used to be a horse on the others. I will. I'll go out to. I'll go out back and use one of those uh, buckets. Yes. Carlin will just, like, turn right around, walk out the front door, and go around to... I presume there's, like, a stable-type area or something like that? Uh, yeah, there's a stable. Uh, Goat has been left there, and Goat looks up to look at you as you get over there. I will just Mm. sort of, like... (sighs) And, like, pat Goat gently. Goat appreciates the pat. Excellent. Time to find the closest bucket of water and dunk my head in it, because... Oh. Yep. Alright. Corellian uh, um. stays outside to clean up. What do the rest <clears throat> of you do? Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a place to wash and then and get ready on this article about, about, the, right. um, about, about um. the strange fae, fae-ish place. Okay, yeah, I think you still have one more day on the uh, on the in stay, so you can do you can do that, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm gonna get out of Thav's uh, comfy spot and try to get something to drink. Okay, uh, like a lot of what they have today is Elven wine, which is uh, five gold a bottle. Hmm. Anything else? If you like wanted, or anything? if you wanted like cups, that would be five silver. Hmm. Never mind then. Yeah. Just gonna try and get out. Vavagath's gonna walk up and grab and grab a bottle of elven wine. Cool. All right. So five five gold, right? Five gold. Uh, you pass the gold over, and the the elf keeps twirling her hair, looks down and sees the gold, and looks up at you and it's like. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. The the fighter guy. Okay, cool, cool. And she uh, pulls out a bottle of wine from under the counter, just hands it over. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I remember this. Um, Malafane walks past the uh, past the um, the bar, looking at the wine and shudders, and just goes to one of the buckets to wash himself off. Uh, those would be in the rooms, because you don't want to fucking get naked and washed up in the middle of the tavern. That would be weird. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, we, can have, day. we can always dream. <laughs> can we, though? Mm. Well, probably tuck away, his, tuck away the elven wine. I'm going to save that for just a little bit later. And he's going to find... He's going to mosey on up to his room. Cool. And get um, a nice little wash. Dad, am I still in your bag, or did I get out? I think you said you got out. I think you said you yeah. got out, yeah. Yeah, I, I figured Dad would, like, keep him in there, like, try to keep him in there. <laughs> all right. I mean, you can, you can stay so, in there if you want. Uh, <laughs> you all <laughs> gonna stop you. You all spend Sorry. midday resting. Uh, it's about eight hours, so it ends at sunset. You're all fully healed, spell slots back, long rest complete. Um, in that time, would I be allowed to use charisma to write the article? Sure, about, yeah. Uh, about the strange thing. I really hope I get good because, oh boy. <laughs> Fuck. It's Ooh. very, Wait. very hard to write about the Fae, and you kind can of I... mix up your metaphors in the middle of your writing. Can I perhaps g um, offer advantage by going up to Corelli and patting him on the back and retelling the awesomeness of what we, what just went down? <laughs> Why are you doing it with Corellian? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I meant Trevlon. <laughs> Smooth as Apparently, ice. everyone under a certain height just looks the same to Thabagath. I can't God. believe Thabagath is I a I thought highest. I was the racist one. You are. Uh, Everyone's racist two, in Aerion. That's the fact. All right. Was that, was that a yes, by the way? I'm going to say yes because he's giving you a first-hand account to back up your first-hand account. Heck Please. Yeah. Where baby. we fucking go, baby? baby. Mm. Yeah, corroboration with your partners makes for really good stories. The more you know. Hooray! Oh, we just have to battle. Da, 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 da. All right. Uh, by by this point, uh, the the high elf has long since left the tavern, uh, and as you all regroup, uh, Ravanala enters, uh, carrying like. A uh, sack over her shoulder as I pull up a picture of Ravanala because again, everyone <coughs> needs to see the freaking artwork. It's great. It is. Yay, yeah, uprising. Whew. Oh, step on me. All right. Uh, she looks at you, waves, and uh, gestures to come sit with her at a, a nearby table to talk talk out stuff. Um, um, I... I'm guessing as soon as I saw that high elf leave, I sort of just. Made yeah. my way back. You just kind of yeah. snuck yeah. back in, giving Basically, Goat another pat as you did. Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Making our way Come over on. to the table, I grab one, two, three, four, five, six cups from the uh, from the bar, throw them down onto the uh, the table, and place the uh, the bottle of wine right in the middle of the table. All right. Uh, she looks over at you all, nods in appreciation at this particular label of wine. Uh, and says, I meant to catch up with you earlier this morning. Uh, took me a while to figure out you were back here. Uh, I have to congratulate you for your work uh, during the la during the last night. You did very well for civilians. Well, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't have gotten there to begin with. We have your thanks as well. Uh, please, I get enough praise uh, from the rest of the she and Fei. Um... It's not too much to ask. What did... We hired you, but what did... What did Solana pay, uh, if I may ask? Solana agreed to service with the Shi Sin Fei in exchange for aid on this particular mission. Whoa. So she works for you now? She works for us now. Interesting. That's quite the position. Indeed. Uh, it's a good choice. Hmm. And in case it wasn't enough, she had some other payment. She uh, throws the sack onto the table. I personally have no need for it. I figured you would appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> um, what is I mean, it? I mean, uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I mean, are we gonna? I mean. Mm. Okay, but what is it? It's much appreciated. All right. Yes, you, uh, thank you. You open okay, the sack. Okay, but what is it? You open it's the gold. sack. And look through it. Uh, there's there's a couple stuff in here. There's a uh, oh. there's one shining, huge, huge, huge garnet. Uh, looks Ooh. to be pretty valuable. Uh, there are 
a couple of small paintings and carved pewter figurines in here. Uh, look like they could be valuable to collectors. Uh, two spell scrolls and three potions of healing. You recognize their potions of healing because you have potions of healing on you, I believe. Hmm. I, have, I think I have three, yes. Do the figurines um, look familiar? Are they of any particular figures? Uh, or? A lot of animal figurines, like uh, bear, wolf. There's a beaver in there. Uh, nothing of any particular uh, familiarity. I'm sorry, did you just fucking say bear? Yes. Uh, never again. Never again. We, 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 bears are fine. We, it's just that the, sometimes sometimes bears get trapped under logs, and then we try and help them, and then it all goes wrong. That's he wasn't then, trapped. And then, they live in, and then they live in trees with bearskin no. rugs. Corellian, oh, why? Corellian, why do you have a bearskin bear. rug? They're talking about an earlier bear. Uh, I remember that's now. That's right. I remember now. <laughs> There are many. We have many bears in this campaign, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, Rabbi <laughs> sure. notices your reaction and is like, do, do, "Do you have something against bears?" Uh, no, not particularly. That's just Malafane. He gets like that around some types of folk. I, uh, <sighs> now we got, now we got looks at the uh, the potions of healing. So, okay, anyone who already has potions of healing or can heal, raise your hand now. I, I raise my hand. Raise, I hand. raise my hand. Okay. Give, give. Uh, we assuming that everyone's okay with this. He pushes one potion of healing towards uh, Mel. Hmm. And there's yeah. Phil's shitty no. internet. Motherfucker. Fill it in. <laughs> Fill it in. <laughs> Fill it in. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, hold on. Uh, all right, are we good? Hello. Good talk. Hello. Hello. Good talk. Everything good? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Okay. He eff effectively pushes one one potion towards Malafane and keeps two for himself. Not on a greedy point, but pure because he's got you know, he's bar barbarian takes more damage, gives more damage, that kind of thing. We're cool with that. Yeah. Plus. That uh, the uh, plus, Mal has <coughs> the healer's kit from the Plague Lord, so he's got a stabilization option too. Exactly. There we go. Fucking yeah. sorted. All right. I'll have two. Malafin, you can have the other, unless you want to give that to me as well. In which case, I won't say no. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. All right. So, uh, she uh, she looks at all this and is like, "I'm sure someone could." Uh, more properly identify how much all of this is worth. Uh, I personally have no need of it, so that's why it goes to you. Uh, did, did you have any more questions you needed to ask me? Um. I, um. Hmm. Mm -hmm. In. I guess my question would be do you have any for us? I mean, you beckoned us over here. I, uh. I wanted to drop this off, and, uh. She looks over at Malafane. I, I have some news, but I, I believe that would be better delivered in private. Um, okay. Um, before we do that, um, Ravanala, have you ever heard of a group or people called the Plague Lords? Uh, that's right. Plague Lords. That's who they um, served. I, uh... I've, I've heard of them. I've never seen one in person. Uh, from what I know, they're a mercenary band of alchemists. Where are well, they based out of? Hmm. Do you know? Do you happen to know where they usually have been reported to be seen, or anything like that? Well, honestly, if I identified myself as a plague lord, I really wouldn't advertise myself in any particular location. I mean, yeah, fair enough. That's fair, but hmm. We ask because we met a certain individual within the Sacred Grove who did identify themselves as having an affiliation. Really? Hmm. What, I, what a disturbed individual. Yeah, that's one way of putting it. Partially, he was partially responsible for the corruption. Hmm. Or at least he claimed to be so. 
Same to me. Either so. way, we either way, weird chap. Mm. Claim to be so. Well, if he is a mercenary, he was likely working for someone. Which means, needless to say, he disintegrated before we could get any information out of him oh. about that fact. Oh, oh dear, that that is unfortunate. I yeah, not particularly. I mean, you weren't holding him. And he didn't like. You've ever you ever had someone dissolve in your arms, mate? <laughs> it yes, is. I have. It's not pleasant. It's like it's like uh, skin turning into sand is genuinely unsettling. To put it lightly. She looks highly unamused at this particular conversation. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm sure that the experience was unpleasant, but so, but nobody words. This is Scott talking this time. I am terribly sorry. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure that the experience was unpleasant, but anybody who harms any of my friends deserves a fate like that. I'm I'm sorry. Mm. I mean, set me. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to deny that, that guy was a dick, but mm, st still wouldn't really. Ugh, just gross. Anyway, um, yeah. One so last one 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 additional question. Sorry to take up so much of your time, but how have relations been with the Oreads recently? With the Oread? Um, I. Well, I... Much as I hate to admit it, I do have to keep a certain eye on politics, much as I would rather not. And the Oread have not particularly been keen on reopening trade routes with the elves these days. Interesting. The dwarves at least would talk to us even while they insulted us. The Oreads don't seem to have any interest. It's troubling. Hmm. Actions seem to speak louder than words. Um, one more thing before I forget. You, you've been around this island for a long time, right? Well, it's not an island, but yes... Okay, I don't know what you would call this continent. Should, let's call it that. Um, do you know of a person called Old Ren? And then she uh, she's racking her brain, trying to remember the name. Sounds sounds like that would be a nickname, if nothing else. Probably is. Mm. In uh, any case, that. That that's all I wanted to ask. Well, if, hold on. Would a description help? Yeah, that's true. He's just an old bloke. He's um big beard, ring. Uh, no, I didn't even see the ring last time I looked, so I'll retract that. Um, Humanoid figure, dark cloak, baggy pants. Seems to have these fuzzy, furry shoes of my, sorts. My apologies, but do you have any idea how many mysterious old men fit that description on Erion alone? I mean, how many mysterious old men wear slippers, like, People just everywhere, though? People want their feet comfortably. I mean, fuck, fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, fair enough. I guess we'll have to ask him more about himself when we next see him, which hopefully should be soon. Here's hoping. Hmm. Right, well, was that all? Can't think of anything else. It's all from me. Thank you for your time, Ravanala. Of course. All right. Uh, well, so you said you needed something to tell me. Yes. Uh, and the rest of the party heads off, uh, leaving you, uh, Malfane, with Ravanala, who looks around leans over the table to whisper and says, it's about your mother. Uh, my mother? Yes. Uh, what, what is it? What do you know? Uh, I, I tend to keep tabs on elven mercenaries and military groups and the like, part of my job. Uh, so I did, uh, did my part to look into what was causing your mother's illness. Uh, I haven't figured out the cause, but it's been growing worse. She's, uh, she's been moved to a secure location outside of Ashen Alora. Oh, that, that's, is there anything they can do? You, please, I, I just. I'm, 
I don't know. It's it's out of my realm of expertise. I'm I'm sorry. What about my father? Where is he? Heaven knows. Uh, took on a boat and sailed out of Arion to try and find a cure overseas. Gods. I just... I don't know what to make of all of this. I... I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, Ravanala. I, I need some time to process this. Of course. Take all the time you need. And she gives you, like, a, a comforting pat on the back. Oh, God. I could, too. She goes and falls great to that sickness, and now... No. No. It's going to be all right. I'm going to find whoever put her through this godforsaken illness. We'll be fine. Ravanala nods. Thank you for... Thank you for your... Your time and for this information, Ravanala. Of as course. Disheartening as it is, I much most appreciate it. She nods again. Um, if there's anything I or the rest of my party can do to to repay you for any of this, I I don't. I guess. I, <laughs> Thank you. Of course. She gives you another comforting pat on the back and uh, and lets you go. I'm going to walk back over to the rest of the party. Just hot, try and hide the uh, the fact of whatever was whatever was troubling me before. All right. Roll deception. <laughs> Roll deception. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Try and hide your grief from your friends. Yeah. You'll fail well, because we care about one. you. You're bawling and holding up a sign saying, my mom's <laughs> doing real bad. <laughs> She's holding up a sign. It's one of those fucking acne signs. Mm -hmm. All right. So you are all together. What do you do? Um, you look like you could use a drink. Aragath says as he pours yeah. while one of, one of the glasses full to the brim. He's Got a thing about no, alcohol. I mean, no, thank you. Okay, I shall drink it on your behalf. <laughs> and I'm just imagining you just chugging the drink in one go. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, oh I, uh, I checked on Goat, by the way. He's doing fine. <gasps> oh, yeah. Great. He's That's a, excellent. He's a, he's a good goat. Yeah. Good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, not that I'm questioning your your loyalty to our goat friend. Um, why didn't you wash in our room? I mean, is I mean our rooms, I should say, or well, one of them at least. Jesus, where are we sleeping? Are we sleeping in separate rooms? I can't. It remember. was it was one big room. Uh, for... Yeah, I was right. Fuck. Yeah, I asked that. <laughs> uh, didn't didn't want to stink up the place, I guess. Uh, did the rest of us? No sorry, did the rest? Uh, the rest of us notice that that old guy was staring at us, well, specifically Karelian, or at least in our general direction, right? Uh, at least in your general Mal direction, yeah. Yeah, Mal asked what he wanted. <laughs> um, right. Um, yeah, he didn't seem that. particularly interested in talking. At least mm. I don't think he did. <clears throat> battle quickly after that old guy stared at us. Is that anything to do with it, or am I reading too much into this? I... We have had run-ins in the past, I would say, where we didn't precisely see eye to eye on some certain immutable issues. Um, I had never thought that I would see him again. But here we are. So hopefully that won't be any 
problem. Uh, I did spend a good amount of time, you know, off, off continent. I only just came back recently, but uh, mm. either um, way. Is there a chance we'll be seeing him ever again? I, I honestly couldn't tell you at this point. Potentially, yes, but should anything happen, uh, trust me, it's all to do with me. And you, you lot wouldn't have anything to worry about in that case. Um, I don't oh, know if cool. you've met us, but <laughs> generally speaking, we tend to interfere in our other friends' fraud problems. So, uh, just, if you want us to stay out of it, we will. But just, no, we, we're we here if you need us, right? If things should go... If he would show up, and if things were to go south, it would be in your vested interests to potentially stay out of it. We'll say that. Wow, it would but not you don't be understand. Yet. Going against my basic instincts is this. <laughs> going against my vested interest is uh, kind of what I do. Uh, we are true. we are we are inherently oxymoronic people. It's a bit yeah. I don't know what that word means, but I agree, you know, I agree with Tiny Man. Yes. <laughs> fair fair enough. That's very in in character of you. So I believe. He's just so tiny. He's not that short, He's says so Corellian, like tiny. literally a few inches taller than Trevlon. I mean, yeah, I mean, technically, okay, you are, st like, mm. think of it this way. He is, he looks kind like, mm, mm, mm. Yes, so use your words. <sighs> I'm just bitter and sad. <laughs> 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 that's it basically I can't really explain it other than me small, me want tall and that's it <laughs> there there you go. Go. Thavagath with a slight blush in his cheeks just look, looks down at you and just he's just like oh, oh. I realised how small you are oh. <laughs> You're just and so on that bombshell wow. I'm, I'm just and Trevlon just sort of grips um the, tankard of wine and just sort of just like slurps it up and goes, oh, that bombshell, I'm gonna go and kip because I am tired and broken inside but what else is new? Haha, -ha. self-deprecation jokes are the best. Yes. Good night, y'all. And Trevlon happily takes up his um, uh, written article and heads up to bed. We should all probably get some sleep. I want to watch him sleep. I bet he looks so funny. I heard that. I bet it, oh, I bet the big bed will just make it look even smaller. I'm continuing to hear this. Fav, I, that's a little, it's a little odd, uh, to say the least, when someone practically twice your size says something like that. Uh, just maybe tone it down a little bit. Just okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 I'm gonna head off to bed. You all have a good sleep. You all right, mate? Y yeah, I'll, I'm. I'm fine. I'll. I'll be. I'll, I'll be fine. I'm. Good night. Just walk up Mal to the room and. Yeah. Follows yeah. Mal. And when everyone else is doing their own thing, I'm gonna pull on Mal's the back of Mal's shirt. Hey, Mal. Um, <sighs> can I talk with you for a moment? I, I suppose. It's... I just need to get something off my chest. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I... feel like... me and you... haven't been... as close as I would hope. Because with... Thav and Corellian and Trevlon, I'm a lot closer than admittedly me and you are. And I... I feel like I... I could get to know you better. Because I, I love all of you. But I don't know you. And I was thinking about that earlier. So... 
If I mean, you have a... I mean, bonds that some people share are just tend to be stronger than the bonds that others share, I suppose. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I haven't really had friends like any of you guys. I honestly think of you guys as family now. And I want to know ab more about you guys. So, if you ever need to talk about anything at all, get something off of your chest or anything at all, I'm here for you. We all are. There's a slight smile uh, on Mouth's face at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Momo. I, I appreciate that, honestly. <laughs> and Momo smiles like, and nods. If there's anything at all that you need to talk about, myself, any of us, I'm sure I can speak for everyone here. We're, we're all here for you. And for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'm starting to feel a bit winded. <sighs> Me too, <laughs> honestly. But for some odd reason, I don't feel tired at all. I kind of don't want to go to sleep. <laughs> but, you know what? Hmm? You want to just... You want to just go outside and talk for a bit? Sure. Um, <laughs> Momo walks behind Mal and lets Mal go outside and take uh, take us to wherever he wants to sit down and chill. Oh, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that looks at the night sky. Oh, actually, maybe that's not the best idea. Oh, wait. You don't have to worry about that. Momo <laughs> taps himself and he glows. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good thinking. Why did I, how did I even forget about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's something that, it's just become a part of me now. Nobody really remembers it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we all have moments like that, don't we? Yeah. Sometimes I forget that I even have this personality. It's just become part of you. Yeah, I... <laughs> I guess it has. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Mal go outside. Okay. We just talk. Mm -hmm. All right. You... You go outside and talk. Uh, the rest of you go back to the room and start sleeping. Uh, I'll, I'll go with Mal and Momo first. Uh, mm -hmm. so, as you head outside and just start talking, uh, you're kind of sitting in, uh, in a small brush, not too far from the tavern, just in case, like, you need to rush back in. Uh, and just as, as you sit there, uh, Mal, you notice that your pack is a little lighter, and you turn, and sitting next to you, uh, is a fox-headed man with, like, gold-rimmed spectacles across his face flipping through the spell book you picked up. Oh, I remember this fox. Oh, oh, um, excuse me. Uh, he, he looks up. He's like, oh, yes, hello. Don't mind me. I'm just, I'm just doing a little bit of light reading. Um, uh, can I help you with something? You seem to be looking through my book rather curiously. Your book? He looks at it again. Doesn't have your okay, name well, on it. Okay, so it's not technically my book. He looks but... over at you. You don't le even look like you know how to use it. I suppose you could say it's a memento. Mm. Mementos tie you down. I don't think you'd have any particular use for this going forward. 30 gold for what it. Do what do you mean? I mean... I would very much like to have this book, and I am willing to pay 30 gold for it. Uh, gosh, I, I don't know. I mean... Uh, Look Mal, at this thing. what does that book mean to you? It's water damaged. It's not even yours. Barely usable. What use are you going to have for it? I suppose it reminds me of family. Mm. Yeah, it may not have its uses, and it may be worn out, but it's still special. He flips through the book again. Special my Aunt Fanny. 
well, why do you want it? What possible use could you have it if you think it's so bad? I happen to be a collector of books such as this. Mm. Um, Mao, does... Did someone give you that book? We found it when we were going through the cellar that one time, or the basement that one time. Oh, Don't you remember? Oh, so you took I it guess. off a dead person. How very charming of you. <sighs> it's a little more complicated than that. I don't really see why. Look, I appreciate the offer, but I think I'm going to hold on to this for a little bit longer. I, Who knows if I might need it. Mm. Fine, he says, just tossing it back to you. Thank you for your time, though, I suppose. Oh, don't patronize me, little man. Did I seem like I was patronizing him? Now this guy just um, seems like a dick. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, sorry, I was talking. I'm talking to Momo. Did I seem like I was patronizing? No, he just seemed like a dick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. And then very good. And then the fox-headed man stands up, walks behind the tree, and you don't see him walk back out. Oh, my favorite. Who was that? This is Scott speaking. Who was that strange fox? Oh, well. Oh, well. Have we seen him before? You have, in fact, seen him before, Momo. Uh, yeah, I thought so. Now that you mention it, he does seem familiar. Yeah. The last time you saw him was uh, at the City of Shimmering Lights, where mm -hmm. he tried to make a deal with you and nearly had Corellian go steal some family's food. Oh, you're a good fucker! <laughs> what a charming guy. Something. What a nice man. Uh, oh, I remember now. He... I, do you remember when we were in the City of Shimmering Lights? And... Corellian almost went to go steal food from a poor family. How could I forget? I think I bonked my head once or twice while I was there. I think that's the guy who caused it. Whew. Well, dodged a bullet there. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Wait, the hell are bullets anyways? I, I think, think they're those the things town. that the kobolds were shooting at you on the oil rig. Ah, thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lord. Yeah. Really You're God. welcome. Really Send money your to man on the internet. <laughs> My go. All right. Meanwhile, uh, the rest of you sleep and dream. Thavagath, you dream you're in a field of baby goats, but whenever you try <laughs> to go and pet one of them, its neck just snaps and it collapses into a pool of blood. And before oh, long, you do this. Oh. you're just surrounded by this field of goat corpses. Alex, I'm gonna find you and it's strangling. All staring directly <laughs> into your George. eyes. And then Please. you can and then you think you can hear one of them ask, Why? I swear to God, that's what I Trevlon! Oh no. <laughs> you dream you're a child again. Uh back with your sickly mother and your siblings trying to care for her but her fever gets worse you try every single medicine that you read about but nothing is helping and she turns to you and she asks why? I'm not cool with that fucking <laughs> Corellian in your dreams you see her again <laughs> the elven woman with the long hair sitting at the edge of your bed humming a song from, uh, from a couple of dreams you've had in the past, on the road. She's just sitting there. Hespera? She turns to you, smiles. Her smile widens beyond the normal range of elven, uh, elven muscle. Musculature! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It widens and the skin begins to crack around her mouth. Oh. As she reaches out a hand, grabs you by the neck, and speaks in a voice that's not hers. You were expecting someone else. And I'm going to need you 
to make a constitution safe. Jesus. Oh. Happy Halloween. Hey, lady, you nightmare. It's super effective, you, uh, I guess. Weeks. <laughs> you wake up screaming, staring into the face of this floating wraith with, like, half of its face looking like Hespera, the elf, and the other half just, like, torn away into shreds, some of it dangling off to reveal a skull beneath, and you drop to zero hit points as it floats above you. Oh. Uh, the rest of you, this causes enough noise so that you can hear and start to wake up as I move over to that particular map. And I would like Check everyone on. to roll for initiative. What oh. was that? Oh, that sounded like Corellian. You know, let's I go. Gonna, I was gonna say that the guy sleeps out with goat, but I'm very glad I didn't. Yep. Ooh, I figured I on. might as well just in case. Travel yeah, on, you might as up. well in case someone goes over to heal you from almost dying. <coughs> Dear God, bless you. All right. Nation. Da, 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 da. And Yay. big money. Big money. Did you just get his... Big money, no whammies. Mm -hmm. God dang it! <laughs> oh. All right. As I move <coughs> everyone around. All right. Trevlon, you rolled a natural 20 on initiative, so you're up immediately on your feet, looking at this floating creature above Corellian's bed. Um, right. Shit, I need to get rid of this thing immediately. There's no way I can really use Shatter without hurting us. Um, question. Uh, does Bestow Curse work on Wraiths? Um, let me check what Bestow Curse does, because if it's a touch spell... Yeah, it's it, a touch spell. <laughs> yeah, you can't touch that thing! <laughs> right, um, if that's the case, then Trevlon is going to shout... And, and sort of just go, what the f- And just start rushing towards this thing. Um, well, not rushing towards this thing. He's going to shoot it with a uh, hand crossbow. Okay. Uh, at, as he sort of tries to get a shot at this thing. I have the anticipation that it's not going to work, but Trevlon's, Trevlon's just up and he's I worried, believe so. In you. Uh, that's a 15. hit. Roll for damage. <laughs> All right. Uh, you grab the high end crossbow from the side of your bed and fire. The bolt phases through the wraith, causes a little shimmer, so you hit something, it's just hard to hit the creature, as you hear it <coughs> cackle as it strangles Corellian and say, The rot's heart sensor regards, paladin. Uh, is that your turn? Um, what else can I do? <laughs> uh, you have a bonus action and a move action. Uh, right. <laughs> Can I give Bardic Inspiration to Corellian to make sure that they don't get killed? Yeah, Can absolutely. Bardic yeah. yeah, he has no fucking hit points Do anymore. It. Do it. Go, I'm, going skip. To, I'm going to try and yell at Corellian to sort of make sure that he stays alive. Like, sort of keep, I've just sort of words of to ensure that they keep fighting. So next thing you do, you're going to have a plus six on your uh, D, on your next roll. Uh, so plus you, six actually, or wait, plus no. six? It's a D8. Yeah, D8 yeah, on right. your next yeah, roll. Hell yeah. All right. So you have a D8 for your next roll. So use it. Thavagath. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, sorry. Not Thavagath. I lied. Malafane. I apologize for lying. <laughs> Malafane. There we go. Malafane. There we go. There okay. There he is. All right. First things first. Where the hell is the entrance? Um... Where the hell's the entrance? Around the tavern. God. <laughs> Fuck. You now can... why'd you bring us all the way out here? <laughs> Me? I... You can try to smash what? through a window to shoot in there. Oh, God. Property damage. Uh, uh... Just do it. There's no time. Okay. All right. Start dashing towards uh, the closest window that we... I'm assuming we know, like, where our room is. Yes. Yeah, just 20, 20, 20, 20, 30. I'm assuming, wait, this isn't a window. That's not a window. This is a window. <laughs> that's not a window, that's a spaceship. <laughs> that's not a window, um, that's a wall! <laughs> through the door? Right. What, would I, what would I need to do to break through the glass? Uh, athletics check to break it. 
Fuck. Oh boy. It's glass okay. though, so it should be a pretty easy roll. Wish me luck. That's enough. Uh, oh, thank fuck. You grab a nearby rock and just bash it against the window to create an opening. <sighs> the hell's gone here? That. Oh. Okay. Help her. Uh, help her. Help can him. I, can I help still... him now? Her, him, them, yeah. whatever. Uh, whatever it I'll is. I'll say that was part just, of your action, help, so you can still attack now. after you climb through the window. Okay. Yeah, crossbow to the face. Or rather, short bow. Bow! Bow! Fucking bow! Do it! D word! Alright, uh, you scramble for your bow as you climb through the- as you climb through the window and fire, but it goes wide and embeds itself on the wall behind the wraith. <laughs> Alright. Um, in that case, uh, uh, I offer tactic- uh, Master of Tactics to Thavagath. Help him! Alright. Speaking of, guess what? We have enough bits to do for the first time in several streams. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, no. oh, Fuck no. me oh, up, dude. Fuck, Fuck me up. Fuck me up. Fucking <laughs> shit. So ready. I'm so glad I failed it's... at Kansi. Actually, it's my turn. I know. I remember who was the last one to draw. All right. Here we go. Try Mal, don't... Me. Mal, don't go. die. Uh oh. This could either go really well or really horribly. Uh, okay. It's too dark to see it. Great. Yeah. It's the cyclone, though. It's the cyclone! <laughs> All right. Uh, Malifane, you shake Thavagath awake, and in the distance you hear... <sighs> if oh, the wind could sound again. angry, it does. It definitely does. Wait, and, what? Uh... The wind sounds angry and starts picking up and throwing things around all around the room <clears throat> as the damn monster the summons tries to load. There we go. There he is. As like this swirling oh. vortex appears in the middle of the room looking pissed. And how does the wraith react to this? Uh, the wraith turns to hear this, uh, not being bothered by what happened before and just <laughs> stares <laughs> flabbergasted. Look, my... me, this pulls like a Poltergust 3000 kind of effect. <laughs> no. Just a, a small oh. Italian man comes in and starts <laughs> using it with advantage. So, hey, good news. It goes before Thab again. Oh. Excellent. Oh. Oh. Right. Fucking Tra favor. Travis, Travis favor. not enjoying this. Oh, Please right. work in our favor. So, Thanks for drawing, do. Scott. Oh, gee. Sure, blame it, it on Scott. It turns towards you, Malophane. Uh, of course. And like, roars out something in Auron. Since you speak primordial, you understand it. And basically, it just said, Fuck you! And comes <laughs> at you with a fist surrounded <laughs> by electricity. Ooh. Uh, Excellent. All right. Um, 16 to hit. I used... I use my uncanny dodge. I'll take eight. All right. That is halving damage, not halving the attack roll to hit. Oh, oh, okay. You okay. can still use uncanny okay. dodge to half the damage, though. I'll, I'll let you do that. All right. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'm glad I'm not taking 16 damage. <laughs> you take... Uh, <laughs> you take seven damage, and... So do I take the higher roll or the lower roll? No. Two hit... To hit is the attack roll. The damage roll comes after it beats your armor class, which I think 16 does. Yeah. Heck. So, seven damage total. Uh, I factored in Uncanny Dodge, so there you go. Alright. Alright. And as it punches you, it just sends you flying out the window again. And <laughs> squeezes through that <laughs> space after you. What go. is that?! Anybody get the number on the to go? Oh, what did you do? All right, Thavagath, you wake up just in time to see Malifane get fucking decked by a swirling mass of wind. And also, oh, Corellian is dying because there's a wraith in the room. Damn, what did I eat last night? Trevlon yells at Thav and goes, Forget about Mal, he'll, can't, he'll handle that thing. Help Don't Corellian know. now. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, I, 
So I've been trying to think. Thunderwave that wouldn't work. Uh, fuck it. What would Tharagath do? Tharagath would take out his little his little javelin of lightning. Is what he'd do. He'd grab it, grab it with his big meaty sausage of a hand, and then <coughs> launch it at that fuck boy. That one. That one right there. All right. Uh, After activating it, of course. After activating it, okay, so it's going to make a deck saving throw against, I think, 13. Uh, it missed. <sighs> da, 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 da. Yes. It so missed it gets electrified and also hit by the javelin, so roll damage there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there we go. It gets hit, uh, actually disrupted, uh, turns towards you, Thavagath. Uh, as I calculate damage for it. Uh, and says, You shouldn't have interfered, meat sack! Now watch as your paladin dies! And it uh, reaches out a claw and slashes at Corellian. Huh! Well, please, no death. That's, that's please, two death no saves, death. right? That's two failed death saves as it hits you. No. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay, potion of... Potion? No, wait, no, my, my action is done, isn't it? Uh, potion no. of healing has to be ingested. It can't just be thrown on no. someone, can it? Yeah. Corellian! <laughs> no. I can't believe I'm about to fail my third. No, 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 If you die, you, I'll come, I'll freaking kill you. You better like, use the operation, D8. You succeed! <gasps> oh, oh, fuck. I can still no. fail it again. Oh, God, I wish I were awake for this. You oh, understand? Gods how above, happy I wish I, I was awake for this. That. Holy shit! <laughs> Momo, I'm gonna fl like I'm just gonna dash past the cyclone. Can I do that? You can, uh, if you like <coughs> move around it and not in its range, so it can't punch you. Okay. <laughs> oh my God! How far can I go? About, Ten like, squares total with a dash. Uh, how many? Ten. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, zero. Okay. I just... All right. I, I like, I bust in there. I see the thing. I'm like, oh, shit. And uh, I can still use a weapon, right? You can use a weapon and a bonus action. <laughs> Thank God. You really want to use a weapon right now. Heal them. Oh, good point. Uh, I'm going to cast... Uh, healing word is ranged. Word. Healing word? Okay, healing word. <laughs> yes, submit it. Do it. All right. You uh, you call out a prayer to Malil, and uh, it uh, it snaps oh. Corellian out of their shock and back to vague consciousness. So now, Corellian, you get an even better look at this floating half-elf, half-wraith thing that's floating in front of you. Holy fuck. All right. And, and then I you still, still have a bonus an, action, right? You still have an action. Healing word's a bonus action. Okay. Uh, mm, all right. Uh, how do you kill this thing? Can I, can I see, do I know what this is? And do I know how to kill it? Roll a religion check. A religion? Ooh. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm not sure why you use disadvantage, but I'll take the 19. That was an accident. Okay. Uh. <laughs> This is a wraith. Uh, more specifically, this is a dream wraith. Uh, wraiths in general are angry lost spirits that kill people and turn them into other wraiths. Dream wraiths, however, are created when someone dies during a particularly vivid dream. Uh, being undead, a lot of the tricks that work on undead usually work on it. However, being created from a dream and escape of the mind, it's also vulnerable to psionic damage. That being said, in your cleric training, you'd had uh, you had a lesson in ways that you could turn the undead and force them to flee, basically. So, I could use one of my spells, right? You can't use a spell because you already used healing word. Turn undead uh, does not count as a spell, though. Can I do that? Yeah, absolutely. But, okay, I'll do that. Click on turn undead so it shows up in the chat. The power of Malil compels you. Okay, where is it? Where did it go? Where did it go? It's in your features and traits. Cool. Sorry. Good lord. 
Toll the dead, you said? Turn undead. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm actually getting really antsy about this. Holy fuck. There we go. All right. You raise up your holy symbol and speak out a prayer to Malil as you try to use it to basically fill the wraith with incredible fear as it rolls a saving throw. Yeah, it did not make. Uh, it's, it's now focused on you and trying to get away from you on its next turn. All right. Trevlon. Trevlon is on mute. Yay! Trevlon! Whoops. Didn't mean that. <laughs> Wasn't my intention. Um, I'm going to use... Um, just think. Would... Shit. Shit. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Would a physical attack with a rapier or something hurt this thing? A physical attack with a crossbow bolt seemed to hurt it a little. All right. If that's the case, then Trevlon is going to... Pop off of his bed and slash down with the rapier. All right, that's a hit. Roll for damage. In a minute, um, a Discord message has popped up blocking me from touching it. <laughs> Take that, <laughs> please. Please, there Discord. We there we go. All right, you uh, raise your rapier and thrust it into where you think the heart of the wraith would be. Uh, it seems. It seems. Annoyed, but more focused on Momo holding up that holy symbol. Anything else you want to do? Um, remind me what sort of actions Bardic Inspirations are. Are they free? I think they're bonus actions. If that's the case, I'm going to keep telling Corellian to hold on and not die. So, another I'm, D8. I'm, I'm, I'm up you, now. There are a lot, yeah. Well, I'm still worried about you, so... Don't mm. miss. <laughs> Take the D8. Take the D8 now. All right. Uh, Mal. Okay, I really don't want Corellian to die, but I also really don't want to bring uh, two monsters into this, so... Hmm, 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 hmm. I don't suppose that uh, being able to speak primordial means I can communicate with this thing, does it? You can. Oh. <clears throat> All right, let me think of how I'm going to do this. Um... Hmm. Right. Okay. Hi there. Um, you wouldn't happen to be uh, upset with me, would you, or my Fuck friends? You! <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Um, what would you say if I were to go away and you would be able to take care of that little ghosty thing in there? You suck more. Hmm. I see your what point, you? but, uh, uh... Actually, but I think you a... can also understand it, Momo, since you speak Oren. The oh. wind speaketh the truth. I see your point, but, um, let me make this rebuttal. And I'm going to take the dash action to run away from it in the hopes of leading it away from the party. It gets an attack of opportunity because, uh, because I of the dash. I... Oh, disengage, I'm sorry. Disengage, Wait. okay. All right. Uh, yeah, this looks good. Okay. In that case, it's going to follow you down and be like, Don't run from me! I was having a nice day and then you ruined it! <laughs> what did I do? All right. Ooh. He punches you again. I'm assuming you uncanny dodge it. Yes, and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'll, I'll uh, put that card up as well so the audience can see it. Okay. Uh, me. All right, because he's a fifth level rogue, uh, he can use his reaction to half damage, which is incoming, which is great because rogues are squishy. All right. Yeah. So very squishy. Uh, the air elemental punches you with a hook, dealing counting uncanny dodge. That is. Where did he get a That hook? is five bludgeoning damage. He does like a hook, like a hook throw. And punches you through. Uh, through the window into the room <laughs> and yells, hey guys, Next going? time you think about my feelings! And flies off into the sky. Good. Hey, 
Perfect. You look. Like Hi, you mate. Can... You seem. Yeah. Help us. Also, what? Okay. I'm not going to ask how you got punched through two windows. I'm just going to sit here and be thankful you're back. All right. You look like you could use some help, though. Here, take some tactics. I'm going to. Yeah. You can't use tactics. You already used a bonus action. Oh, disengage, I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take that shit back then. Okay. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Thabagath. Okay. Thabagath. Gonna, gonna mosey on over here. Is, is, is what he's gonna do first of all. Now he's gonna, he's gonna. Ah, uh, uh, oh, fuck this. What, what, what would this count as? Uh, me slipping, slipping a potion of healing into Corellian's That's nimble an fingers. That's an entire action, is it? Mm-hmm. <sighs> um. Me too. Well, to be honest, I could, I could. Uh, you, mm. you know what? It's, it's worth it at this point. I, I will slip. Karelian, a potion of healing, because this boy seems to be very angry at Karelian. All right. And if anyone's going to get attacked again, it's probably going to be Karelian. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you hand over one of your potions of healing to Karelian, who chugs it as I look up how much potion of healing heals for. Da, 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 da. It's 2d4 plus 2, I think. 2d4 plus 2, I believe. Uh, roll them dice. Yeah, 2d4 plus 2, so roll that to heal. Sure. Alright, you chug down the mm -hmm. potion. Uh, you're in a hurry Something. so you don't get its full effects, but you feel way better than you did before being attacked by a wraith. I will growl a thank you. Laser eyes fixated on wraith at this point. Alright. I don't think I can do anything else at this point. Um... No, nah, that's, that's me, uh, be done. Okay. Yeah, that's all I can do. All right. Really. Oh, I just realized something. Now that mm -hmm. it's trying to escape, it's going to get an attack of opportunity from literally everyone here. You say that, but it grabs the javelin of lightning and phases <clears throat> straight through the wall. Well, fuck. Wait, how did the javelins phase through the wall? That's some bullshit. It got your javelin. Whoop, 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 Oh, shit. All I right. You know, I could have sworn I had two of those buddy things, but it says that I only had one. Good. And oh. then, uh, okay. it's momentarily quiet before you can hear this, like, shouting of voices in Elvin, mostly along lines of, who's making that racket? And footsteps heading for your room. Oh, no. Oh, no. Carly looks at the door. Looks at the window, looks at the door, sighs, and does not go for the window. I, oh. Trevlon, Trevlon sort of just like looks at everybody and goes, keep calm, I'll, I'll explain everything. I think our Shouldn't we will take care of that thing? Are we in any state? Yes. <sighs> yep, pretty I, much. I... Uh, all right. Can Trevlon open? Well, it's Corellian's turn. They, they uh, should, they should be. Able it's Corellian's to turn, so you can go through that door. I am going through the door. All right. You go through the oh. door, and an Elven innkeeper is standing there, holding up a candle, staring, and asks, "What the actual fuck are you people doing?" Someone I broke in. Someone attacked. broke in. Yeah, it was it was awful. They broke in through the window and then sort of just started trying to kill him. It sucked. There's a magic dream. Um, what are they called again? Dream, dream wraith? wraith. Yeah, there's a dream wraith. Roll perception with advantage, not perception. Persuasion with advantage, because that is actually what happened. Uh, ah. it stole my stick. My stick of thunder. All right, my stick. The. The elf looks around, sees the broken window, curses in Elvish, and is like, Well, Wraith or no, Wraiths don't pay for property damage. That's not important right now! It's fine, we can pay for it. Uh, can I activate my Divine Sense? Sure. To try and see where the Wraith went. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems to have moved... Above you. Crowley's like, he'll just like snap up. Where are the closest stairs? 
It's above us. Uh, like probably around in the main tavern. Perfect. Thanks. We'll pay for it. You have my word, and Krylon will just immediately go for the uh, the stairs to try and home in on. All right. The wraith before it leaves. I'll uh, I'll make this real easy. Uh, you continue looking for the wraith as it just goes higher and higher up, and then leaves your divine sense. So by the time you get to the tavern, uh, you're fairly certain it is gone. My stick. Damn it. Shit. <sighs> Does this mean I have to leave the job in the lightning? <laughs> we can't oh, have our time. Sorry, Thav. Tried. I'll go. Fucking <sighs> talk about those windows then. And just sort of like very defeatedly head back, counting my gold. All right. Probably like here. Um, let me help pay for that. Yeah, me too. Should be like uh, twenty gold total to put in some new glass. Twenty gold total. All right. Well, that's four gold each. Um, is she actually? Do, do I, is it plausible that she's telling the truth here? Roll insight. Uh, um, take a, advantage because I was the one who broke through the glass. And I'm curious. Sure, about take that advantage. As well. mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You have heard that some of the elves overcharge people who are not full-blooded elves, but it is possible at this late hour that she's just not thinking very clearly enough to overcharge you and is giving you a proper estimate. I'll trust her. Um, I get shit. Like, if it's 20 divided by 5, that'd be four. Just four each. Four. Four each, yeah. Uh, I get four gold ready. Yep, and just fork it, fork over my share. Yeah. Same. All right. You, uh, you hand over the gold. She looks at you and it's like, yeah, you guys might want to find a different room. That one's like covered in glass and we're going to have to clean it up. Yeah, just got to get our stuff first. All right. Thank you. Do you have any wraith proof rooms? <laughs> That would be nice. Mm, no. What kind of establishment is this? You don't even have proof your rooms. <laughs> it just goes off in this like mumbling spiel as he heads back. Mumbling <laughs> engine. Right, well. Oh, wait, is Momo still glowing? Momo is still glowing. Okay. Right, well. After all of this, I think I actually am a little bit tired myself. I think I yeah, am going to turn in for the night. You can sleep all you want. I, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll just... keep watch. All right. Yeah. The rest of the night passes uneventfully, and you all wake up the next morning. Karelian, you are fully healed after that particular encounter. Uh, it is morning. Did you have anything you wanted to do in National Aura before you headed back out? Well, Trev wanted to actually ask Corellian something. Okay. Um, whilst we're getting started and starting to get ready for the morning, Trev sort of coughs and says, Um, Corellian, mate, um that Wraith, it said that someone was sending their regards. Who who exactly was that at from? Okay, out of character, Alex, I'm sorry, but I did not catch the name when uh, you initially said The Rot Heart. I don't believe. Do I recognize that? Roll history. Can I help them with that? Maybe we discuss uh, it. I believe you can because I think you heard the name, Trevlon. I did. It was long ago, was it- yeah. But wow. roll history. Uh, okay, so, you don't know much, but Trevlon, you remember being in the market of Port Mirandu outside the jeweler's store, and there was this tiefling who was selling gems he claimed to be blessed by the rot heart. He did not offer up anything else. There was, um, 
There is a tiefling in um, Port and Brack and Port Morandu that said that they were blessed by the Rot Heart. And I guess if we've got any... So, and Honestly, that's the best lead I can think of right now. Um, I guess if we want to learn more about where the hell this thing might have come from, he's the best person to talk to. If it was a he, what, who exactly? Was it a, was it a he who was blessed? Or was it a, was it a she? Or Hard to tell sometimes. <laughs> Fair enough. I guess we'll find out ne- <laughs> when we get home. <laughs> uh, if we can find them again, that is shit. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I know Port Miranda pretty well. I'm sure I'd be able to wrangle around the streets and find him. I'm pretty good at that sort of thing. Very true. Oh, um, tra- I've been meaning, sorry, Travelon. I've been meaning to, uh, uh, my apologies. Recently, I have, um, it has come to my attention that I've been acting far more familiar with you than is my than is uh, than is proper so uh my uh, apologies for that um i have been saying things and referring to you in ways that yeah you don't have to worry about me doing that sorry that's trevlon sort of blinks and and sort of looks kind of somewhat confused but like just sort of goes i mean uh, okay, sure. Um, I mean, I didn't... I wasn't uncomfortable or anything. I don't think. It wasn't... You're fine. Don't worry about it. Basically. <laughs> don't worry. You're good. If you say so. Hmm. I do say so. I say it quite quite firmly, in fact. I'm, I am I would write it down, but I, I think I may have last used my last piece of paper. Bloody, I've been writing too much over this last time. I've got three stories and only one really good one. Thank God, actually. One of them was about Thad losing in that fight. I'm going to burn that. <laughs> now nah, keep it for blackmail. Yeah, just oh, keep it short to Thad every time he starts <laughs> calling it short. <laughs> Excellent. You know what? Fine. I'll keep the fight one just in case. Um, but I will probably get rid of the interview I did with the guards. That was probably ju- that was just... That was mostly a distraction anyway. <laughs> yep. And Trevlon goes into his bag. Is there a fire nearby? Presumably this is like in the, yeah. in the living area. Presumably, Trevlon. yeah, there's there's like a little fireplace surrounded by a metal grill. Trevlon takes it out, scrumples it, and tosses it in the, um, the, the fire. Man, right. I had to... Fr- I forgot the word fire. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, anything else you wanted to do? Um, hmm. I want to check. So Momo just goes over. Hey, are you okay last night? I know that must have been awful. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Me? Yes. Yeah, d- not to be that... <laughs> He's absolutely right. I forgot about... <laughs> How do I forget? You got mauled by a dream wraith. It's that... fine. I mean... That is not fine. That, that is... sucks. I know about dream wraith, and I personally haven't had an experience with one, but I know that they are absolutely awful, and I'm sorry you had to go through that. It's not... It, it's not the fact that I was mauled, per se. It was just I thought it was someone else. That's it. You had a dream, didn't you? A bad one. I mean, it was it was actually pretty nice up until, well, the whole wraith thing happened. Uh, oh. I, I've, been, I've been having them. I can't help but wonder if it's maybe the same wraith has been following me around or something. That doesn't seem natural for a wraith, from what I know. But neither does it necessarily seem natural that a wraith would be sent by someone. And, like, wraiths, like, what do I know about wraiths, Alex? Are they, can they be, like, yeah, I'm going to roll religion. Uh, and I'm going to be real good at it, because that's totally something I'm well-versed in. He said not being well-versed in it in the slightest. I've oh actually got a 20. <laughs> I'm not getting a natural 20. That's a 20. Uh, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you're correct in that normally wraiths are just angry spirits that do their own thing, haunt the usual places. So for a wraith to be ordered around, 
would take a really powerful undead creature. Yeah. Um, it's it, it would be weird if, if Corellian was being followed. It's also weird that the Wraith was sent by something in the first place, so... What would it, even... Who has the power to do that? Apparently the Rot Heart does, and I think that would be very important of us to investigate when we get back. There was do a tiefling. Do I know tiefling. anything about the Rot yep. Heart? I, yeah, I was going to say, do we know anything? All right, uh... Make a history check, those of you who haven't, about the Rot Heart. Alrighty. Uh, history, history, history. Mm. Seems like a title. Hmm. Hmm. Other than that, you've got no idea who the Rot Heart would be. Well then. I Either way, whatever it's gone for now, we'll just keep an eye out and try to find out more. And I guess I'm more perturbed than anything else that it chose to appear to me as that specific thing. I don't know if that was the wraith doing my dream or whether it just happened to stumble in at the right time, but. I hate to have lost you. That would have been... I wouldn't have been happy with that, to put it, to put it lightly. <clears throat> um, in any case... Uh, there's... anyone. <clears throat> in any case, we know... I know for a fact that someone in Port Miranda was talking about the Rod Heart, so that's going to be my first, um... well, port of call. Bef uh, before we get back to old... after we get back to old Ren, of course. Speaking of which, I need to ask that guy some questions. I am... Hmm. Something concerns me about him, then I need to figure out what. Would you mind if I went with you? Well, presumably we're all... I'm a, do you I'll mean... Talk? Together. You're all yeah. together. <laughs> I thought you... <laughs> <laughs> we're all going together, so don't worry about that. But if you want to come with me and find the person who was talking about the rod, huh? I'd be cool with company. Right. So I guess, I guess we have a place to be now, don't we? We have to get home. Uh, yes. I didn't want to do anything in Ashran Laura, but I did want to take just a few minutes before we set out traveling to do something. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Um, Corellian uh, will kind of go, sort of like once we're all packed and ready to go, uh, they'll go out to the stables and start a particular ritual. Okay. All right. Would you care to describe for the audience what this ritual is? Um, absolutely. Uh, do, do you want flavor and mechanics? Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Um, in that case, Corellium will sort of uh, find sort of like an empty kind of stall, kind of away from the other animals that aren't, uh, that are more prey animals, so to speak. And uh, they'll sort of clear out some of the straw, clear out some of the hay, and... Um, sort of like pace out sort of a, a certain dimension of area and um, with their war pick they'll sort of draw like a bit of a circle and uh, kneel in front of it and um, utter a prayer to Bahamut even though I'm kind of new at doing so and do my best to summon something to my side. All right. Mm -hmm. And this is the Find Steed Ritual, which summons Ooh. a spirit to take the form of a steed for Corellian. Now, I, I already know this. Uh, would you care to describe uh, what the steed looks like and is, basically, the... Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I knew of... I knew of um, folks back home, uh, part people who are part of my clan. Some of them trained giant weasels, giant stoats for use in hunting, for use as steeds. They were keen, smart, intelligent, basically everything that uh, I kind of aspired to be. And so my steed takes the form of a giant stoat. She has 
russet fur and a white chest, and her name is Mosca, or uh, Mosca, if you can't pronounce that. All right. You, uh, you perform your little ritual, and uh, this bright glowing light appears in the little area you set out, and when it fades, there is a gigantic white-furred weasel. I say gigantic, it's more like person-sized. Uh, but there is a weasel covered in white fur kind of gnawing on one paw and then giving it a little lick, gnawing on it some more. I want it. Uh, I want it. Uh, That's a fine steed you she, have there. Uh, she then looks up at you, stares directly into your eyes, does a little nod and goes, no. Oh. <laughs> Relian's heart oh, melts. Just <laughs> oh, just a little little nod back and just just pet, and I'll tell her what I decided to name her. Uh, because I can do that telepathically. So yep. um, yeah, just hu <gasps> hug Steed. She's so soft. Oh God, this is everything I've ever wanted. <laughs> I can't stop hearing Steve, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who's that? They don't exist. They don't exist. Why would they make a spell for something that doesn't exist anyway? Uh, yeah. Right. What a weird choice by the designers. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you rejoin your companions. Weasel in hand. Travelon is looking at this thing very hard. D uh, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. What? What? Who? Karelian, um... Her name is Mosca, or Mosca, if you can't pronounce that. Oh, this this is a little forward, I know. Can I hug the shit out of that thing? Uh, look, look over to Weasel, tilt head, ask permission telepathically. Telepathically, you hear back, Mosca like hug? I want hug! <laughs> Krillian looks back at Trevlon, just nod, nod, nod. Trevlon just sort of extends his hands and just sort of... <laughs> jogs towards this thing <laughs> just wraps his, wraps his arms around it and just goes, yes. Masha yes. leans into the hug and like <laughs> rubs is. her face all over you. Corellian's <laughs> oh, yes. heart just melts more. It's like a puddle at his claws. Oh, what have well, I done? Well, this, this makes up for literally every atrocity that has ever happened. <laughs> I'm comfortable with life now. Yes. Momo's eyes are just Stars just I want <laughs> And you all to be aware that this entire time Thavagath has been making a a, a a sound so high pitched no one understands that it's coming from Thavagath. <laughs> Is a yeah. kettle going <laughs> off? <laughs> My reason ears are in pain. <laughs> uh could you could you tone it down? Her ears are a bit sensitive. I'm sorry. Oh, that was you. Oh. <laughs> oh. Are you... Are you alright? It's so cute. <laughs> so, it's like one of those small little weasel things, but completely the opposite of Trevlon. <laughs> Trevlon just hugs it harder so and just... just <laughs> yes. And Trevlon's so small. <laughs> Yes, you can. Yes, you can pet her, but um, I'm not responsible if she nips. I go over to it and pet it, just ever so. Mushka likes pets. She loves it. She's just like <clears throat> leaning into all of you. <laughs> that guy is just like desperately searching around his pockets for for from for some seed. I'm not sure if. If, uh, She's a carnivore. Mm, I did. You, you oh, still have some gosh. seed after buying more, so you pull it out. Mosca stares. She looks at Corellian and asks, It does not eat meat, yes? Corellian sort of like looks back and sort of like tilts matter. her head a little bit. Mm -mm. No. He doesn't. He's doing his best. Thav, uh, she's a carnivore. She eats meat. You see, you see the teeth. Probably like points points to their own teeth, sharp and pointy. Mosca's teeth, uh, sharp yeah. and pointy. Mosca opens up to demonstrate, going. Ah. Oh my <laughs> how far away? Is the, how far away is the market? Uh, not too far. Like it's basically okay, a quarter to a half of the city, so you can get there easily. 
Thalgath instantly drops the seed, much to I'm sure Momo's dis- uh, upset, and sprints like Momo has the full face of fucking defeat. force over to the market, specifically a butcher somewhere. All right, yeah, you can uh, you can get to a butcher. Uh, I don't have a specific butcher shop with an NPC that has plot lines, but yeah, you get over to a shop, ask around, look for a butcher. They can get you like some jerky. A uh, couple days worth will cost you five silver. Oh, I'll get like uh, two times that amount because I'm not right. myself. Oh, so. cool, yeah, you've got 20 days worth of jerky for Moshka. Fuck yeah. Okay, he shoves, it, he shoves it into his pocket. I Thanks. really needed this. this. And this is good. Sprints back full force, right back, <laughs> right back to everybody else, panting as <laughs> How's this? <laughs> Does 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 Moscow approve? Moscow always approves. Look at that face. Do you think Moscow would ever not approve? No, I love her so much. Yes. This is very... You could you you could you could give her food. Go ahead. I don't married. think she technically needs to eat, but who doesn't you like hush. eating? You hush your butting off. Very true. <laughs> he, he very very tentatively and very gently just inches towards Moscow. Mm-hmm. and holds out a, a piece of jerky with the biggest grin on his face. She immediately bites down, yanks it from your hand, and just goes nibbling on it, going, I really needed this. Today is the best day. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, mm-hmm. I've forgotten about when Thav called me small. I'm comfortable now. Yeah. Um, um, well, you see, see the advantage to being small is, and Krellium will sort of telepathically tell Moscow what he's about to do, and uh, Krellium will walk over, sort of like pick Trevlon up, and sort of like boost him up onto Moscow's back. Oh. Trevlon sort of just looks at Thav and goes, fucking, yeah. <laughs> fucking, yeah you can't on. do this, can you? Hold on, I can't yes. exactly describe this with words, so let me just find exactly what I'm looking for. <laughs> Hold on, is it an expression? No, no. Thavagath instantly, without even a moment's hesitation, <laughs> does this. Uh, for the record audience, he is linked to a video called Homer Celebrates. <laughs> in which the character Homer J. Simpson is running on the ground in a circle, going whoop, 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 except in more high pitch. It's very good. All right. There you go. People are staring now, (laughs) Thavagam. I just just imagine everyone just sort of, like, looking down at Thav, just a circle, like, uh. so, um... Do I have divine sense? Hmm. Um, is, can, can, I, can I see if Thav is okay? Well, that's not what Divine Sense does. <laughs> it, it's like... It, is he possessed? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can certainly look. Uh, roll a medicine check to see if he's possessed. Okay. Uh, where is it? Oh, why am I so slow? No, nah, he's just Thav Agath. Oh god, it's worse than we thought. Six of one, <laughs> half a dozen of the other. <laughs> oh no, it's just Abigail. <laughs> so, um, where to now? Well, unless anyone else has business in and around the city, I propose we go back to Port Miranda. I miss Port Miranda for some reason. Abigail steps up, says, Sounds like a plan, but first. Runs away, grabs goat, brings goat back. Just puts goat in front of Mushka. Mushka and goat and just start goat. nibbling on each other. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that they could get any better. <laughs> Proud father look overtakes Karelian. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Thavagath and Karelian agree on something. <laughs> Finally, all character, all, all of our characters' difficulties and differences are established as no longer relevant. We have this, and all is well. <laughs> this is how we'll. This is how we shall bond. Mm-hmm. All right. So, with that done, you head out of the city and back to the world map. Uh, back to the world map. 
There we go. Thank you. Hey. Bad man. Bad man. Bad. Go to your room. All right. You can go move. Get your you can move three hexes in a day. Uh, technically, Mushkit can move faster, but that would put her ahead of the rest of the group. So don't do that. Uh, we'll stick together. And this one is Port Miranda, isn't it? Yes. Uh, Sweetness. Okay. All right. So, uh, where do you go? Um, up left. Up left. Boom. Then up left again, I'm assuming? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then up right. Up right. And yeah. up right. All right. The day passes without incident, and you make camp as I roll for camp. Uh... You get to, like, a bridge across, like, small river, but uh, it's, like, not very deep, a couple <coughs> feet at best, but you, like, camp underneath it, shelter from the elements, it prevents a uh, campfire from being seen. It's all good. Okay, I'm gonna sp uh, I'm gonna train goat again. Okay. I'm gonna do some goat train, get some animal handling. Does anyone want to assist me with this? Uh, what time is it? It By is the, the middle of the night. Oh. <laughs> now nah, then I'll help I, I will help we will have animal bonding time or Heck animal yeah. and spirit bonding time alright oh, yeah, Mushka perform yeah. to put, Mushka for, just for does whatever on command Mushka's trained to respond to whatever Go she's go. perfect and I love her so <laughs> um okay, uh, may maybe goat will take a good example yeah <laughs> Okay, so uh, what what we've done so we've done sit stay, uh, let's go hoof. Just give, give me hoof. All right, that's what we'll do. Month up. Wait, no, that's disadvantage. What? Is it? No, no, it's advantage. No, that was advantage. <laughs> All right, wow, <laughs> really terrible. Never mind. Goat does not seem to understand the concept, and whenever you try to pick up the hoof, it just picks up all of them and falls over on its side. Muska uses that opportunity every time to nibble on goat. <laughs> You know, I'm not even mad. That's just really adorable. But also, mm -hmm. goddammit. Dart, why'd you pick up a fainting goat with that? <laughs> well, he's good, I promise. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> doubting that, but he's still a good goat. He's a good fainting goat. or otherwise. Okay, come here. He picks up goat and just goes to bed. Cuddling goat. All right. He can. So, who is going to take First, second, third, watch tonight. Oh, I can take first and second. Okay. I'll take third. Oh, well, no, oh, oh, okay. Oh, actually, no. <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, you, know, you can you, only you take can one watch to spread it out amongst the rest of the party. Otherwise, you would get no rest and suffer exhaustion, which is bad. Okay, mm. then I'll just take if we one. all ever need to sleep, I'm pretty sure Mosca can take watch and wake me up should anything happen. But Ooh. Carleen's, like, on the ground, like, cuddled up against Mosca and they're just oh. really happy because finally finally it's warm enough for them. Mosca is a perfect is blanket. OP. Yes. I, I love, love her. her so much. Yeah. All right. So, uh, first watch is Momo. Momo, roll perception. Okay. Uh, first. Yeah, baby. Yes. All right. You, uh, you kind of patrol around the camp, making sure that no wraith comes over. And uh, as you do so, you hear this shake, 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 shake from above you. You look up, <coughs> and a pile of dead leaves drops on top of you. <laughs> Mostly it's just uncomfortable, though. All right. So, second watch. Uh, that would be me. There okay. Roll perception. You don't see anything. Seems good to me. <clears throat> All right. Fuck. Third watch. Uh, I'll do it. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. All right. As you sit on watch and uh, are very careful to make sure that no 
air elementals or wraiths come uh, and bother you. Unfortunately, one of your worst fears comes to pass, and you hear in the distance as this bear just kind of like oh, stumbles uh, across the camp, like unsteadily, and like weaving back and forth, going. Uh, and then it stares at you, gets up on its rear legs, falls backwards, flips over, tries to do it again. At this point, Mushka wakes Karelian up and is like, there's a bear. I saw a bear. Are we really going look to do this right now? Drunk? Roll animal handling. <laughs> Do it. Okay. Oh yeah! Oh, this bear okay. is fucking drunk! Uh, it appears to have eaten some bad fermented honey and is just completely out of it. <laughs> so here- <laughs> Oh, this is too rich. So here's what I'm uh, gonna are do. Are there any sticks on the ground? Oh uh, yeah, you can find some. I pick up a stick and wave it around in the bear's face and just say, oh, Who's a good bear? Who's a good bear? You want the stick? You As want you, the might stick? Wanna, you might want to back up for what I'm about to do. Probably will very slowly approach Bear, get within touch range, and then expend five uses of Lay on Hands to neutralize the uh, alcohol, if, if that would be possible. <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, you, uh, why, though? You, uh, why? you lay on hands on the bear as it uh, looks down at you, goes, <laughs> and it kind of burps a little before <laughs> dropping to all fours. And just walking past the camp like it ain't no thing. It ain't no thing. Take, take a step back, retract Claw, look over to Ez, do like a little nod, and then like, well that was fun, I want to go back to sleep now. Fun isn't exactly the word I'd use, but by all means, go right ahead. Have a good night. You too. <laughs> Alright, and you go to sleep. The rest of the night passes without incident, and you all wake up. Huh, I had a surprisingly nice night. Um, did anything interesting happen? Uh, do I notice any tracks on the ground? Yeah, you notice the there are some bear tracks that look like they're just kind of weaving back and forth for a while before going straight through the camp. Uh, nope. Judging from the ground... Uh, either an attack or a very tired bear. Drunk. 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 They and get you into your wine. Me up. I don't have any wine on me, but um, best guess is some fermented honey or other food. It went on its way. Honey, I wasn't aware honey could get fermented, but hmm. I think anything with sugar can get an alcohol. Well, that's <clears throat> meat made out of honey. Then again, you probably wouldn't know, would you? Oof. Well, now you do. Well, well now I'm you just, do. I'm just upset that I didn't manage to see our fourth bear sighting. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm awake for the next one, because, oh boy, I'm keeping a tally at this point. How oh, are you now? Oh, by the way. Yeah. By the way, you Good cut talk. out. talk. <laughs> by the way. Oh, I'm just looking at the, uh, ah, you know what, never mind. <laughs> uh, well, that's going to hold me forever. Yeah, that is too. <laughs> I'm sad now. Uh, I'll never Joe, know. Jojo, uh, why? But, well, no, I don't want to take Alex's role. Uh, Wait, what? All right, uh, so Carter. Momo, you Me? you wake up in the middle of the night, uh, and you feel like something's been drawing on you. What? I rub my face. I pull my hands back. Do I see black ink? Yep. <sighs> yeah, and also, it inspires you to draw a card from the deck. Oh, right out, right out. oh, boy. oh fuck we! Is it the slap Scott in the face card? It might be. <laughs> My favorite. I really, hope, I really hope it's the. the, the, the... All right. Oh boy, what's this? That is the peacock. That's a uh, new one. All right. Oh, not a as a uh, as you look at uh, at the ink that's covering your face, you get angry and like 
unconsciously wish it was off and you were clean. And then you look down and you're in a completely new outfit with your other clothes being na- laid neatly in a pile beside you. Oh, what, well. What does the outfit look like? Uh, I will leave that up to Momo to describe. Uh, it can be as fancy as you want. <coughs> Uh, uh, I can default to it's like a really sparkly tunic with uh, like a fur trim on it. Oh, I already have an idea. I already got it. Thank you, Alex. All right. Um, I'll draw it out, but cool. it's it's really nice. All right. Oh, so I see that for the push up, I guess. Oh, well, this is nice. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. And the ink that was on your face is also clean. That's the power of the peacock card. It makes your personal appearance look great. Woo! Um, oh, too. well, this is nice. Oh, don't you look rather dapper? Hmm. I know, right? How did how'd that happen? Where'd you find clothes? I have no idea. <laughs> is there like a tailor around here or somewhere? I don't think so. We're in the middle of the woods. Better explanation, the weird god that seems to be following us about and cursing us seems to be a, seems to have decided to be nice. Whatever it is, yeah. I don't care. I look nice. Damn right you do. You look really nice. Huh. Mm-hmm. Good, good. <coughs> All right. Good, 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 indeed. And then it's the start of a new day, and you can head out. Um, I guess top right? Top right? Sure. Yep. Passes uneventfully the morning. Now the uh, afternoon. Right twice, I guess. Go right. Yeah, right twice. Okay. As you as you move eastward towards Port Mirandu, uh going down the road, you hear you hear the distinct sound of hoofbeats in the distance. Hoofbeats? Hoofbeats, hoof yes. Hmm. Towards us or uh they appear to be oh, coming. Like towards our toward- yeah, they appear to be heading in your direction. Are we on a road? You are on a road, yes. Can, uh, I, can one of us roll perception and see if, if we can spot what's coming at us? Definitely, yeah. I'm on it. I'll give you an advantage by helping you out. Uh, thank I'm you, you are too kind. Uh, just to clarify, it's coming from Port Mirandu that direction, or coming from National Laura? from the east towards you. All right. Okay. You, uh, you listen... Uh, it's not just hoofbeats. It, it appears to be a lot of them. Uh, the braying of several war horses and the clank, clank of plate metal barding on the horses. And uh, you can hear some faint shouting in common. Uh, because you're all the 27, you can actually hear what it says. Uh, you can hear, there they are. Oh, fuck. Oh, we've got company. Uh-oh. I'm keen. <coughs> what do these guys look like? Uh, yeah. You look in the distance. It appears to be like several several war horses approaching with armored riders. Behind them are uh, a couple of wagons. Uh, a lo- they look pretty decorated, uh, and they carry an emblem on the side of the wagons. An emblem of like a lightning bolt. Oh fuck! Oh, oh for God's sake! Uh. I um, will get on Mosca's back and prepare myself for the worst because war horses are not good. All right. Uh, yeah, let's all step to the side of the road and hope that we do not get ran into. Yes. Uh, you hear the baying of hounds as the war horses approach and like stop in front of you. And uh, you can see several armored knights now just kind of all looking at you as hounds bay at you. And they are drawing swords, pointing at you. Good afternoon. Oh. How can we help? Morning. Happen? All right. Uh, and then you hear this faint trumpeting sound. Well, not really faint. <coughs> it's coming from two, uh, two hooded figures with glowing eyes and hands next to a wagon. And then you hear a clank as an armored figure steps out of the wagon and approaches. Uh, he walks up to you, and uh, you can see in more detail, it's a really decorated set of plate armor. Uh, he is a middle-aged man with blonde hair and uh, a stern, cruel look in his eye. Uh, 
on the on his helmet there are two downward curving steel horns one of which is broken uh shoulder armor decorated with a serpent's head his lower arm gauntlets have like blades attached to them and his legs have like barb like spikes on the armor uh he has a shield and a long sword the shield has an emblem of a lightning bolt emblazoned on it and he stares at you and finally he speaks and says, Just, oh. I would like my hammer back. Uh -huh. Let's just oh. assume at this point that all of us look at Thav. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that beast of a boy. He's a big boy. There he is. Would, it, would not, would not that, mess with. That hammer in shot, would that by any chance be Storm's Herald? Yes. Ah, oh, that was cool. Quick, Did everyone you? stare at Thavageth slowly. We all glare <clears> at Thavageth. <throat> well, not glare, so, just all like... Thavigath so, uh, assume, uh, just assumes you're all looking at goat and also looks at goat. <clears throat> Thav. <clears throat> um, I hate I to think... break it to you, but I think he's looking at you. And he's looking for the thing that, you know, you remember a while ago we said that we'd wait for the guy to come back and get his hammer for himself. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, we've left, didn't mm -hmm. we? I think that's the guy. Hi. Oh, Hi. cool. My patience is rather limited. We oh, well. Stand that end. We drum. Thalagath takes the uh, the hammer off his back. Says, uh, you know, we found this in a cave, right? Yeah. No, no, I was talking to, I was talking to him. He, he is just staring, no response. I, I, I'm happy to give it to you. It's a nice hammer. I'm going to miss it, but why was it down there? That is... That is something I would very much like to know myself. Now give it. I mean, okay. He look, look, looks back at the rest of the, uh, the the rest of the party real quick, just to make sure that we're all in agreement that I, I'll just fucking give this guy this thing. <laughs> Trevon is no, nodding hard. Oh, no, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Just hands out the hammer. He snatches it from your hands and turns Ooh. away. Um, we're not. Is that it? Are we done? Can we go on our merry way? Uh, he he turns towards you, Trevlon. Were you under the impression that there was to be more? Well, generally speaking, when. Somebody rides with lots of war horses and armed men, you know, raises worries, essentially. If, yeah, you're not going to hurt <clears throat> us, are you? Do I have reason? I don't think so. I would hope not. Not at all. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I think most people do. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> he turns to you, Favagath. Oh, no. I have had more than enough of your attitude, you useless slab of meat. His eyes glow, and then in the distance you hear boom, boom, as lightning starts striking. It okay. starts raining. He holds out a hand and uh, fires out a bolt of lightning at you, Thavagath. I'm going to need everyone to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, you got to uh, be kidding me. God damn it. Well, we're level five now, so... <laughs> all right. Ooh. What the fuck? One moment. I, of I need... all the people. Dexterity save, yeah? Dexterity save. <laughs> of all the times. Son of a bitch. Corellian and Malifane, you see what's coming and dive to the side just in time as Get lightning back. courses through Thavagath's veins and strikes <clears throat> Momo and Trevlon dead on. You only take half the damage. Uh, so full damage for Thavagath, Momo, and Trevlon. 80 damage. Uh, oh. Half damage would be 40. <laughs> oh. Uh, I, that would kill me. I'm dead. Yeah, um, I think I think you three are just down. Yeah. Well, so, uh, Mal and I take half damage? Or... You take half damage. Uh, well, I'm gonna take if, half that's, of that half. if that's 40, I'm down as well. Alright, Corellian is down. 
Wait, I take half of that half because I'm can dodge, so I'm at half of my own health. Okay. You're the only one still up. Alright. Uh, <laughs> Jesus so, Christ. So everyone Jesus. drops except you, Malafane. Who are uh, you still scorched by lightning? Stormkirk <laughs> stares up at you as everyone else falls. Am I to assume you will cause no further problems? No, sir. C crystal. Crystal clear. No nothing will happen. Good. He, uh, he nods back towards one of the wagons. Pick up your friends, get them on the wagon. We're leaving. D d yes, sir. All right. Uh, he was not aiming to kill, so none of you need to make death saving throws. Uh, I was just about to say, like, that was over. <laughs> that was like... That was overkill. That was death! Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I read that if it goes, if you get take so much damage that it is not only your health, but your health again. <laughs> like, that, that's killing. That's uh, my By the way, even if, I, even if I didn't have Uncanny times. Dodge, I would have had one hit point remaining. Yeah, um, <laughs> Stormkirk's nasty, what can I say? Uh, Jeez, but yeah. So uh, I'm unapologetically aroused by this. <laughs> that was... Most guys just Whoa. been sitting there patiently, not wanting to make a fuss, and... Goes over to She's help drag Corellian onto the wagon. Uh, all, oh, all of you are unconscious except right. Malafane and Mushka. Uh, and you sit on the back of this covered wagon on top of this plate of metal as the two men in robes with the glowing eyes bring out chains and wrap them around you before tying them to a post at the wagon and setting it off. Uh, a couple hours later... Everyone wakes up, uh, chained up on top of that metal plate, uh, and in the back <coughs> of the wagon, with Stormkirk and the two men in robes staring directly at you. I don't want to make any more, cause any more trouble than what's already happened, so I just stay silent. Trevon blinks and goes, uh, mm. Mm. Oh, morning. It's the morning. middle of the night. Oh. Oh. Yikes. Was that... Oh, wait. Mm. Wait, how am I still... Hmm. You know what? I'm not going to question it. Don't... I'm just going to hope there's lanterns. Yeah. Yeah, he's got lanterns on the side. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> fine, I'm... Don't worry about it. Mind if I ask where exactly <coughs> we are? Uh, he Remember nods to one of the uh, men uh, who holds out a hand, which is covered in electricity, and he grabs the post with it. Electricity courses through the plate into the chains and shocks you all as you speak up, Trevlon. I'm gonna stop Stolen. talking now. That's a good idea. I trust <sighs> I've made it quite clear at this point that you will speak when spoken to and defer to my authority. You may nod. Corellian nods. Mm. Mm. All right. Does not make eye contact, but nods. Is there anyone who's not nodding? Trevelon hesitates, but does not eventually. Like, it takes like a second. Same. But then I'm saying that Abigath is canonically still asleep at this point. Just because All right. that's what Abigath is doing. It appears the big one needs some further motivation. Uh, the priest grabs the post again, sends another jolt of electricity through everyone. This, uh, it hurts. And it just shocks them again the way. Okay, I'm awake. What? what? Whoa. Well, since you missed the first lesson, allow me to repeat. You will speak when spoken to. And another grasp, and you're electrified again. <laughs> <laughs> now then. You're not without merit, and I am not a fool. I do recognize when there is some potential to be had in certain agents. Which is why I am giving you all one chance to make your allegiance perfectly clear. 
You will, at any point of my choosing, do me favors. You will do them without question, and you will do them promptly. Failure to do so? Well, I believe you've already seen what I can do. Am I clear? You may nod. Kurt nod. Mm, yep. Trevlon mm -hmm. looks at him very, like, in the eyes and just nods. He's not blinking much. Mm -hmm. just sees that everyone else is nodding and just does the thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Then, uh, as you do so, he leans backward. Good. Now, I am not a cruel taskmaster. I am not going to force you along with the whip and lightning. There are certain benefits to being in my employ. If you would be so kind as to wait the night, I'll show you one of them. And then he... Probably a nod. <laughs> All right. And then they, like, pull a curtain shut on the wagon, and you are now in darkness, chained up in the back of a wagon. Can we talk now? <laughs> y you can talk now. <laughs> Trevlon's... Uh, Trevlon is, like, like, <coughs> sort of s silently just chuckling to himself, like, <laughs> Oh my. Oh my. What a nice man. Nice man. What the, what the hell, hell happened here? Who turned off the lights? Why do I feel so... kinky? Uh, I'll tell you what happened, mate. Um, we went... So you know that hammer that Thav had? Uh, its owner came and met us on the road. Um, and then he zapped us because... That reminds me... Thav, what did you say? <laughs> I don't quite remember. It was a oh. heartsy zap, Alter. Oh. You know, that means it wasn't even worth it. Oh, you mean to tell me that we're in its mess because of him? No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we would have been in this mess regardless for the sheer fact that we had his hammer. Van flippantastic. This guy doesn't seem like the sort of person who um, would pass the chance to do this if he feels wronged in any sort of way, even slightly. Well, you heard him. He's a fair man and a generous employer. And Krellian sort of, like, you, you, I'm not sure who I'm sitting next to, but um, I'll, I'll sort of like elbow, elbow bump a little bit at this. And we're not dead. And yeah. so for that, we can at least be thankful. Oh, yeah. Death is, oof, that's the worst. Hmm. I appreciate that. Like he says, employ it means there's potentially money involved. Well, I'm um, certainly so say I, this. I definitely feel a lot more snug than before. I <sighs> have severely high I... doubts that he will pay us at all for this! Ah. We're being paid in our lives, Momo. It wasn't apparent. He did say we there were rewards. Rewards? Probably meant our own lives! No, no, that was implied, I'm assuming. Uh, it's... Look, I've, I've worked for and performed for... Uh, <laughs> uh, novels in the past. They, they uh, can be penises, but uh, working, pretty well paying. Working. <clears throat> I'm sure you're quite the courtier, Thav. Stacy, <laughs> oh, 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 no. This isn't what, what's supposed to happen. We were supposed to go home. We were supposed to go back to Pomerania. We were supposed to get our ne the next job from, from, the, from the old guy. I don't know. I don't remember his damn name. We were supposed to go home. That was supposed to happen. We weren't supposed to get struck by lightning. Nothing is ever you certain, done? Momo. Keep your voice down. Look, life is full of opportunities. Some good, <laughs> some bad. This one, we have no fucking clue. So just roll with the punches and see what sticks. I tell you this much. At the end of this, I'm going to write one hell of a hit piece. I don't want to do favors for some guy. Do you have any pseudonyms? <laughs> I'm hmm. terribly sorry. I don't think I speak. Uh, don't think I speak abyssal. You'll have to speak my language. Pseudonyms, as in something we can call this guy. That is. Uh, oh no! Uh, I meant you, as in to protect your identity, Traplon. Oh, like a pen name, because. <laughs> And, like, you hear, like, this rattling of chades as Krellian, like, gestures, because 
they have dark vision. Mm. They can see. So just sort of like, you know, to protect you gestures to all of you. You um um Alex, remind me what um Gormit calls me a lot. Like that, that name. Cal calendar, did you say? Yep. Tre Trevor one says calendar. That'll be it. I'm pretty sure I've published under that name before, especially um, Wait, you've um, actually published under the name Calendar. That's amazing. <laughs> Gormit used to make me do it when I was initially working under him. It was more to see if I'd be able to cope under the pressure. So I used to work a lot under that. And then Sorry. once once Gormit thought I was up to snuff, I actually got my name in the paper. Took a while, but hey ho. You are um, that's for sure. I'd like to think so. In any case, I'm sure we'll survive this. Besides, I've written about corrupt assholes before, so this won't be a first. I hey, would, you've made it through I would request that you don't refer to the guy two feet away from us as an asshole out loud. Hey, well, look at it this way. We've lived through uh, we've lived through a uh, sentient book. We've lived through a giant moth. We've lived through a rig. I think we can uh, make it through this alive. Why don't Wasn't... we refer to him as codename God? God? Because he looks like a god. <laughs> <laughs> so, I uh, don't want to put a damper on anything, but wasn't Lord Sturm Stormkirk one, the one who struck down... Was it Dragotha that he struck down? If I'm recalling my lore correctly. Roll history? <coughs> Roll history. There we go. I, I had to make sure my advantage is off or disadvantage, uh, whatever. Sounds right. Either way, I'm pretty sure he's regarded as someone in high esteem, major hero. Doubt that many people would uh, be so willing to take the same angle. Uh, <sighs> higher power usually just have uh, just as high of an ego. Yeah, but they also know how to wield it meticulously with precision and to get precisely what they, having dealt with yeah, lords so. and people in power uh, before, trust me. It's not going to last for him. I could just look at that guy and just... There's it. something about a politician or a leader or a lord and there's just something about them that you can kind of get if they're, if they're sticking around. Thank you. Someone who actually gets it. That guy. Lord. The guy might be powerful. He might have lightning powers. He might be able to zap us and, like, just poof immediately. But a personality like that brings enemies. And you can only have so much lightning powers before a backstab gets to you. At which point, Thavagath says just a little bit louder than what everyone else has been speaking. Yes, I totally agree. He's a great guy. You're being sarcastic, aren't you? I, a great guy. Kurt Curling, yeah. like, very obviously points over to the window that's right there. That was closed recently because we're in the wagon and people are right outside. And I know you have dark vision, so you see me doing it. Because I see, just because he sees you doing it doesn't necessarily mean he's. Oh, I'm aware. Are, hand, are, are Thavagath's hands bound, or is it just his body? Whole body, so like arms are tied up against your chest. Okay, uh, I'm gonna assume that we're tied up in in the order that we're on screen. So I'm just gonna <coughs> yeah. Like, ma ma phone. I'm gonna headbutt as. Great. Ah. <sighs> Shut up. <sighs> I'll keep my mouth shut, but I can't expect the same to be said about my quill. We'll deal with that when we come to it. Uh, if I can only rage for my life. For now, let's just enjoy this incredibly comfortable wagon. <laughs> incredibly comfortable. Indeed, that. Comfortable. Entirely. Excellent and roomy accommodations. All right, so you uh, you eventually uh, get to sleep for the night as the wagon keeps on marching. Uh, it gets to middle of the day the next day before uh, 
Curtains open up. Uh, the <sighs> priests remove the chains from the post and kind of like push you down onto the ground while some other knights start wrapping the, uh, unwrapping the chains. And another one just kind of tosses Mushka over to you. <laughs> I will immediately steady her. She's a queen. Wait, so, <laughs> sorry, touch I'm, royalty. Wait, so, so M Mushka, how, how big are, that? are they? Cause Mushka's like a person-sized weasel. <coughs> a person-sized weasel. Good. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. All right. Go bins. Uh, and when you get your bearings, uh, you vaguely recognize this from when you made the trip up towards the City of Shimmering Lights. You are somewhere northwest of Port Mirandu as I move over to the world map. All right. Northwest there. Northwest and or west. Right. Oh. oh Where are sorry. they heading? Uh, they seem to have stopped. Uh, and as, as they do, Lord Stormkirk walks over and says, I trust you had a pleasant night's sleep. Oh, yes, of course. Not. Mm -hmm. Better than I've had recently, that's for sure. Good. Walk with me. And he heads off towards the northwest. I assume we're unbound. You're unbound, yes. Okay, cool. Mm. Following along. All right. Uh, as you follow him, uh, he explains, as no doubt you have heard, my return to my return to Arion was rather recent. As such, my usual agents do not recognize my power, and I need to put new ones in place. This is where you come in. I already own this particular parcel of land. I just need someone to staff it. And uh, he stops. You look past him. And ahead of you is, like, this uh, rather large manor, actually. Uh, it looks overgrown with ivy, although some knights are pulling it away and not in the best state of repair. Uh... But it is a manor out in the middle of the plains. He turns and says, Welcome to Baton Rance Hall. Or as you lot will probably know it, your new home base. Oh. Huh. What? You don't like my generosity? No, I'm... It's very I'm impressive. A lot. Mm. It is beautiful. Come no, then. For words. All right. Well... <coughs> Look at the interior, and we shall talk more at dinner. And then he uh, ushers you inside to take a look around. Uh, inside we go. Oh, shall we? All right. Yeah. You look inside. Uh, it's, a, it's a rather spacious manor. The thing is, it's got a whole lot of empty and unfurnished rooms. Uh, the ones that are in there, uh, there is a simple armory... It's got some racks of weapons and armor, enough for about 15 people. Uh, it's got five bedrooms, all of which have a closet and a privy in them. Uh, they're not fancy bedrooms. It's rough furnishing, uh, straw bed stuffing, two chests of drawers, mirror hanging on one wall. Uh, the blankets are made of like patchwork quilts of whatever's available, and there's rough benches for sitting. Uh, there is a bath, which is another sparsely furnished room, a uh, simple wooden tub and a chamber pot for all your chamber pot needs. Uh, there is a common area down towards the entrance. Uh, currently, it's rather bare with a few benches, got some walls with artwork and tapestries on them. Nothing fancy. It's rather uninspired. Uh, then you take a step into the dining hall which has some long, rough, rectangular tables, enough to, f enough to sit and feed, like, a whole bunch of people there. Uh, there is a fireplace at one end, and uh, the walls of the hall decorated with uh, a bunch of animal heads, like deer, boars, bear. So there's your next uh -huh. bear sighting. Uh, Excellent. The kitchen. Can I move the bear? I want to move the bear head into Malafane's room. <laughs> God damn it. You can certainly try, and then... There's a storage room, rough walls, unfinished floor, uh, something labeled trophy room that is currently empty. Uh, and then there is a kitchen that's rudimentary stone kitchen centered around a fireplace in the middle. Got a pantry with some basic foodstuffs in it. Uh, 
kitchen with has some tin pots and pans, scullery for the brooms and rags, and a basin for washing dishes. All in all, it's it's not a bad place to live. It's just kind of empty and unfurnished. What are, what are it's a shame we sold that armoire. You did you sold did yet. sold the armoire yet. It's it's we were going back. Well, I, I, I was going back with the intent of picking it back up. Yeah. Sell <coughs> it, but well, like, this is spacious at least. What does the immediate vicinity look like? Like uh, front garden, back thing. Front garden, back garden, yeah. like a rather plain. There doesn't appear to be a whole lot of plant life. A couple of weeds, uh, but like it's a whole whole lot of land, like plots of stuff for other buildings to be built there. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Tavika just takes this uh, this quick opportunity uh, while we're looking around. At, at the point where we go around to that kind of area, ties goat up outside, like where, where most of the weeds are. Like t ties him up with like a really long rope. He just lets him do his thing. All right. Aww. Goat just uh, chews on what grass there is out there. Thank you. I'm oh. surprised that they were still able to allow us to bring it. Yeah, I'm yeah. amazed they kept Goat bring and Mushka. Him. Mushka, bring I him. would kind of understand. Mushka's a queen, but uh, they let you keep Goat. And the flood. I already have a higher, a higher opinion of Mr. Stormy Boy. So, what would our stewardship duties be? Uh... That is a good question, which transitions into dinner. Uh, you all are gathered and or dragged down to the dining hall where you sit around a table. Storm Kirk's at one end and uh, some servants are preparing like pretty nice dinner, actually. Roast boar and the like. Uh, and he looks over at you and says, I've already done most of the grunt work building the place. I have some, there are some hirelings here that will take care of the, of the estate while you're away. But there are, of course, maintenance costs, which will have to come out of your pocket. Uh, actually, I've got a couple of handouts for Baton Rance Hall so that you can look at them and see what that means. Oh. Yeah. Ooh, BB, please. Ooh, and how it's spelled. <laughs> Baton Rance Excellent. Hall, there you go. All right. Yeah. I call them hirelings because, at the end, they're all just servants doing a job. Some of them are particularly skilled in their tasks, some are not. Uh, either way, it will come to, let's see, the base for maintaining this hall is five gold a ten day, plus with the current hirelings you have, fifteen gold and six silver a ten day. I trust that will not be too much for you to handle. We can manage. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. <sighs> Now then, as you no doubt have seen, this is not exactly in the best state of repairs. Mal keeps quiet about that fact. That being... I, there's definitely room to uh, work and improve it. <laughs> that being said, there are plenty of improvements I can think of off the top of my head. Made a list of them, you can feel free to peruse it. I cannot guarantee that the prices will remain accurate over time, and he tosses over a list of uh, landowning improvements, it's labeled, with stuff you can add to the manor. Ooh. It's Ooh, your base, so at the end of the day, I cannot tell you what to gain. Though, there are some rooms that require hirelings. If you have no one in particular you would like to take that job with that particular set of skills, I'm sure I can find someone out of the common masses in Port Mirandu. Uh, ooh. <clears throat> you may feel free to ask me about what any of these improvements can do for you. I can see that you're all very confused. I just oh, have one question. Oh, oh. You're letting us basically renovate this place? That is absolutely correct. It's awfully generous of you. Never let it be said that I do not... Sorry, let me start over. He doesn't stumble over his words. <laughs> let it not be said that I only motivate people through the stick and not the carrot. Why us? Um, if you don't mind me asking out of turn, of course. As I said, you lot have a very particular set of skills. 
And you hold no particular political allegiances, which in Irion is quite the valuable asset. Hmm. Okay. My my lord, if I may ask, um, do you, do you mind, my lord, or do you prefer something else? My lord is quite sufficient. Well then, my lord, um, what why? What in particular? Uh, sorry, let me try again. Is there anything in particular that you have in mind for us at this point, or is this a future investment kind of deal? I prefer long-term planning, so yes, you may consider this a future investment. Okie dokie. How did you hear That's about us, with. my lord, if I may ask? When a man of my stature asks about political goings-on in his city, people answer. The current standing steward, Lion Belly, I believe his name was, all too eager to talk about you. What did he say? Nothing good about the halfling, I assure you. <laughs> oh. Apologies for my laughter, at, uh, my lord. It's just... Hmm. Oh, yeah, makes a very, very strong effort to make sure he does not laugh at this. Malfane starts just playing with his food at this point. All right. So, <clears throat> there was one thing I was going to ask. I'm just trying to think of what it was. Uh, we're allowed to go out on business, yes? We don't have to stay in the manor area, you know, for the foreseeable future. We can still go on in our... Uh... You can. You may feel free to do as you wish. Construction will be slower without someone like you to direct it, but it will happen. Okay. Do you have any direct things you don't want us to do? Anything that you think is um, out of line? Question. Well, obviously acting to, against my best interests, which in this case would be re-establishing a seat of power in Erion. I don't think we're in the market for that anyway. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. That tends to end very badly. You're the only leader of Irion, then. Um, presumably, my lord. Oh, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else we should know? Well, if you have any questions, again, about any improvements you can make to the manor or the surrounding land, I'm happy to address them as needed. Other than okay, that... Out of character. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. You know, you, no, finish, finish your sentence. I'll take in a second. Yeah. Other than that, I have no particular need for you at this moment. Okay. Okay, completely out of character. This kind of shit is my shit. This is what I always enjoy in games. Um... But quick mechanical question, just in terms of the armoire itself, assuming that we can grab hold of the armoire, uh, does Irion have any like delivery services that would mean that I could strap it onto a guy for like fifty, uh, for, like twenty gold or some shit, him take it over to uh, uh, where over on Wolf? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh... You can do that. You won't be present for any negotiation, so whatever price you get for selling it is what you get, so... Hmm, true. So, question about um, the estate... Uh, the is that, Sorry, I'm looking... Yeah, the estate bits. Mm -hmm. In terms of, like, uh, residency, I see there are, like, residents, markets, housing, and stuff like that. Yes. Um, I, I presume that's all for the hirelings or uh, it's for the surrounding area for hirelings and citizens who come to live on this land currently you have <laughs> zero who have come to live on this land and only the starting hirelings that basically take care of the estate polish it get rid of ivy and clean it and shit and i would go out on a limb and assume that as we have uh, people moving into the area we or at least will we then get some kind of income from that, like tax or something? You might. Uh, you might. 
Like, once a... Actually, I think there is a specific place, the working complex, that gets you an income from the estate. Otherwise, it's mostly self-sustaining. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Mm. Cool. Just trying to make... Trying to figure out what would be the best way to make this self-sustaining so we're not constantly playing higher wings out of pocket. Um, hypothetically, say one of us doesn't, um, say one of us doesn't live in a permanent residence at the moment, could they, in theory, call this place home? Yes, the bedrooms are open for you to sleep in as needed. Huh. All right, then. Interesting. Thank you, my lord. Of course. Dreadlon looks kind of... His expression has gone from sort of very closed to kind of a little bit more... Um, What's the word? A little bit more upbeat? He's more curious than just properly irritated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mal is still playing with his food. He is clearly not amused by any of this. All right. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Before I before I wanted to become a fighter, <laughs> I really wanted to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> you you wanted to do in, you wanted to do interior design. <laughs> interior design. <laughs> you know what? I was gonna say something else, but fuck it. Yes. <laughs> Marvelous. No, he's always. I, I've always liked planning. Abigail the carpenter. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just really excited. I love these mechanics. So speaking of these mechanics, uh, the ones that are of the most immediate benefit to you directly as adventurers would be uh, Alchemist's Lab through Stables. Yeah. So all of the, all of the, everything from Alchemist's Labs to Stables. Really. Anything from there is of direct benefit to you as adventurers. Mm-hmm. What wow. would a, sh- a shrine do or be able to do what would you be able to do with that uh well a private shrine uh assume that uh stormkirk's explaining this in an in character way yes private shrine will give you uh bonuses to religion checks and healing spells uh a a shrine that can hold service can theoretically be upgraded to collect tithes which is a source of income and has a working a uh, priest there, basically, who can heal you and do other cleric spells for free. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I'm gonna want to let him say we should get that right fucking now. I don't see any problem with that. Maybe. And I'm gonna completely out of pocket by the good, uh, do the stables, if not purely because. All right. God, and now also, uh, Moshka. Moshka, yes. Uh, Stables uh, also give you the ability to hold a couple of different animal companions, like Mushka, your mount, and goat, uh, free of charge. Mm. Nice. Nice, nice. Okay. Sorry. Not going to lie. If possible, Moscow would totally just, like, sleep on Krellian's bed, so. (laughs) So I'm imagining that, like, you can try to keep Mushka in the stables, but Mushka keeps breaking in, sleeping on the bed instead. Absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> All right. Uh, or uh, every now and again, the opposite. Just to hang out with goat. I'm sorry. I did it to ignore me. Uh, so uh, as you talk about excited. buying the shrine and the stables, Stormcook's like, excellent, those can be done. Uh, stables should be very quick. Anyone in particular you had your eye on to hire for these particular tasks, or would you rather I chose? Well, for the okay. shrine, um, there's one I could think to possibly contact. Yes. Um, we met him in, um, gee, a little while ago now. I believe it was... Is it the City of Shimmering Lights? It must have been. A fella called Kailani. Um, nice bloke. Mero. Ah, yes. Uh, Mero, I understand they hold religion in high regard. It shouldn't be too hard to get a hold of them. Cool. Hmm. As for the alchemist's lab, hmm. That could be pretty useful. That could be. And I have an idea if we can ask to come by yeah. and um, help us out with that as yeah. well. Alchemist's lab, uh, mechanics-wise, will brew one random potion per day. 
Mm. Nice. What would the smithy do? Smithy repairs and forges weapons and armor. Interesting. As the gears start turning. Um, actually, mm, 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 mm. yeah, no mind, no mind, no mind. All right. Now, I know out of pocket you can afford the stables. Do all of you have the gold to afford the shrine? Yeah. I mean, I could, I could just buy, buy both. Yeah, myself, yeah, we'd be able to. Myself. All right. Yeah, I do. Uh, you, you can pool money together. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I heard you say, Thavagath, you can pay for both out of pocket. I mean, I, I, I could quite happily. So I'm just saying that that's probably the financial situation of most of us. Am I incorrect or no? I mean, I could, in theory, I actually, I would, I'd be able to buy the stables out of pocket, and but I wouldn't be able to buy the um, service holdable shrine, essentially. Okay, just to cut cut things immediately short, I will buy the stables completely out of pocket right this second. So okay. I've taken thirty gold out of my account right now. About monopoly. Um, and I am happy to contribute up to twenty gold to the hold service shrine. I'm. I'm happy to contribute 20 as well for the service shrine. I'll put in 30. All right. Well, there we fucking I'll go. put Sorry. in whatever. Uh, whatever uh, that that no, covers nice. it. No, that, that's, that's covers right. it all. All right. <laughs> hey, you can, you can budget something else. There's a bunch of things we're going to do, like uh, fucking. Uh, I know. I, I, was just, I was just taking piss. <laughs> I really want that library. <laughs> Trevlon really wants that library. Yeah, so that's yeah, all, honestly what I'm looking at, too. Um. Oh, I'm glad you, to see that you guys are uh, getting used to your your situations. I mean, considering that it's not bad situation. Okay, look, look, look. Another thing. Oh, sorry. Do we really want to have this conversation right now? Oh no, I was, I was, I was actually about, about to say something uh, kind of good. Think about a situation before we were here. Obviously, Trifelon, you've got a job with a, a bastard of a manager. And uh, no home, keep in mind. And no home. I travel around picking fights with people. Momo. Oh, poor sweet Momo. Karelian. I don't actually know your situation. And Malafaint knows about the worst. But consider the situation. We've got this nice place to live in. A wonderful opportunity to not only make money, but make a new place for people to live. Make it our own. And... And under the very generous em employ of the Lord of here. Generous? <sighs> yes, God. it's actually very generous. I'm We're stuck I'm here. Kind of, I wouldn't call it stuck. I would okay. call it something I can hear with you. a better connotation. Sorry, my lord, of course. Yes. Just trying to... Convince our friend that all of this is a benefit. <laughs> yes. A benefit. It's a benefit. See, benefit. It's all good. Everything's great. Everything's grand. It'll be. Uh, please forgive me. He's not very trusting. It will take a brief adjustment period. All right. Uh, anything else you're looking at buying right now? Um. Is everyone okay with gardens? Because I want to buy a garden, but that's two uns uh, two more unskilled hirings. Hirings that'll be more of a cost. I can help buy the library. I'm, I mean the I'm the garden. Happy. happy with the garden. That's only ten gold. So if you want to pay five, All I'll right. pay five. Uh, great. Where do you want to put the garden? Because like front, back, rooftop, if you wanted to. <laughs> uh, for now, let's put it in the back. I'd assume that's where the stables would be anyway. Yeah. So, like, in that kind of general area. Sure. All right. Great. Okay. So, if that's it, uh, Lord Stormkirk adjourns, gets up from his chair. Well, you might as well rest the night here while you've got a bed. See to it that your friend gets over his little attitude sooner rather than later. Destruction begins in the morning. Of course, my lord. Thank you. Yes, All right. And yes, you... thank you. And leaves just complete blank space just to imply the hint that, no, I'm not referring to you by that name, you piece of shit. Mm. Um. 
Everyone sort of looks at him, sort of like. I also look at him. Eye, eyebrow raised. All right. He takes a, pinches his his uh, pinches Malafane's chin with his finger and manually moves his jaw. <laughs> my lord. Stormkirk looks unamused. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> now then, the bed, all of you. Yes, my lord. And yes, with that, we are going to end the session. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. We've got a dictator. I was looking forward to getting to this part of the game. I'm sorry, oh but boy. Now, I was shitting myself the entire time, and sure, the, uh, the situation is not the most ideal, but I, I've said it so many times already, but I love this shit. This is. Oh, I'm giddy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's landowning, which which is the thing I like at least. So uh, mm. who knows? I've never done this before. Maybe it'll lead to some fun role playing activities once they get Kailani over here. Mm. Yeah. I'm also intending on trying to get Anna. I'm trying to get uh, Annabelle for the alchemist slab. Oh my god! I love her. Yes. She would shit yes. bricks. You gave her a scholarship and a job. Holy shit! <laughs> All right. Well. Until I find an escape plan, I do have some ideas for hires. <laughs> all right. We will see you all next week on Dungeons and Douchebags. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.